What's going on, guys? I want to pause the podcast for a minute just to bring you guys our sponsor, which is Merrick Health. But they're not only my sponsor, they are definitely the ones that help me keep my health right. And one of the things that sometimes gets lost in the podcast, we joke around a lot about health and drugs and all these different things, but I need to stress to you how important it is to actually see the people at Merrick Health to get your blood work, but not only to get your blood work, but also to optimize your hormones. So look, I'm not going to take a long time. We'll get back to the podcast, but trust me, get to MerrickHealth.com forward slash RBP. Don't worry about using my code if you don't want to. It doesn't matter. Just get to Merrick Health. Get somebody to look at your blood work. Get somebody to look at the drugs you're using and your hormones and make sure that you're doing things properly because these things can lead to symptoms and issues down the road. Things that I didn't know about, things that doctors never told me about, and things that I'm dealing with now that I didn't have to deal with had I had the information. So please, get to MerrickHealth.com. A lot of the jokes are all fun and games, but you do have to take these things seriously because bodybuilding is a risky world and it's important for you guys to make sure you're getting checked. MerrickHealth.com is the people to go see. No. Really? Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Yeah. It's been a couple of weeks. I think people are upset with me yeah. because I, I took, keep yeah, them I took, waiting. It took I got, a week. I took a week off. I got this guy messaged me and saying, uh, "Ask what what he's putting the next podcast up." <laughs> like every day, I get this from the same guy. I'm like, okay, I just put sure, sure every time. I got a I bunch. A of bunch yeah. Listen, I'm sorry. Sometimes I need a fucking week off. It's not my fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, motorcycle season has come, so I'm going to be taking more weeks off. <laughs> the, the warmer the warmer it gets because i'm gonna be on my bike all fucking summer it's also no e-bike off. it's also e-bike season <laughs> oh yeah it's also, you know what paul me and you're gonna ride together i'm just gonna follow you on my motorcycle you gotta go on the on the, on the trails with me then yeah oh, paul see. you could you could you could drive the new uh yeah spider. The new spider yeah i know i'm gonna get i'm gonna ride sure. my beginners again oh fuck oh. it just go drive you'll be fine actually tomorrow i might go ride it tomorrow for it if you want to come with me you might go what write your beginners yeah listen i'm going to get so for those people who don't know, I upgraded Summer's Riker, uh, if you guys even know what a difference between a Riker and a Spider is, but I upgraded from a Riker to a Spider, which is a little bit bigger three-wheeler. And uh, Summer doesn't ride as much as I ride, so the guys can also ride when they come down. So I kind of, I kind of don't tell Summer, but I kind of bought it for you, Paul. Thank you for it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, there's no way, there's no way she'll see this. <laughs> I was there. I kind of picked it out. <laughs> Anyway, um, she's like, I like the black one. Paul's like, oh no, the blue one's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> actually, he actually he did say that there was a blue one there. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, it was a really nice blue. So, is it too dark in here? Do I need to turn my light up, or am I okay? It's a little dark. It's like romantic, yeah. it's, or like a little bit gothic. Um. Anyways, yeah, are you gonna go write your beginners? Yeah, I, maybe tomorrow. You if you want to come with me before the gym or something. I don't want to come with you, but if you go ride it, then oh. you can you can ride the ride the spider. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I want to ride it to the gym yet because it's a busy road, but I'll ride it around the neighborhood. I'm not saying ride to the gym. I'm saying like you can take it out. We can go to a, we can go to a parking lot and you can fuck around for a while and just get the hang of it. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah, we'll set, he'll set up some pylons for you. I have pylons, <laughs> Mike. I have pylons. The Riker is the Riker is really not something you need to like get a hang of. If you know how no. to like drive an ATV or like just drive, period. Yeah. Like you don't need to learn. I don't yeah. know. Literally, just get not, on it. If you're no. not retarded, no, that's not. You know what? That doesn't go for Paul because Paul, Paul's Paul's fear, fear level is what stops him. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that initial fear. Then I get over it. You like, wouldn't honestly. You get on that thing and you just go. It feel, it's so easy and comfortable. That thing, like you'd never have an issue. No, no, yeah. Ian. Like it's um, Paul. Can I? I I'll cut this yes. out. I'll cut go this ahead, out. You're right. not going to cut it up, but go ahead. <laughs> no, I will. <laughs> <laughs> so it's little things. Like the first time you got on the Riker, he was doing this with his hands. Oh yeah, he thought that it. he thought that you had to do that the whole time. Yeah. So the thing was doing this when he was yeah. like, <laughs> so it's like he just got to get the hang of it. Like he needs yeah. like to go in a parking lot and like fuck around for half an hour, and then he'll get yeah. the hang of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I got pylons too. We can set them up. We'll videotape the whole thing. We'll make a YouTube Sunday. 
Yeah. You'd be like my dad taking me out for my uh, my beginners. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to a mall parking lot that's closed. I'll get you to go reverse in the lines and forward. <laughs> yeah. He's going to bring people, so you have to avoid them. So there's higher stakes. <laughs> yeah. He's going to bring small children. Like my kids. Kids. He's going to have my kids standing out there. Puppies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Newborn puppies. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb and bet that Paul loves it and he ends up riding it more than summer this summer. 100%. Oh, I think so too. Yeah. Because it's fucking comfortable and it's fun as fuck. Yeah, yeah. I just retook. I said, you guys, I retook my learners last week. I had it obviously years ago in my in my M two, but I let them expire, so I just retook it last week. Did you book your your M two test yet or no? I uh, yeah. Well, Melissa wanted to do the course because she's never ridden, so I I'll do it with her. Yeah. Well, it's good to do the course anyway because you automatically get your M two. Then you don't gotta like exactly. Yeah. You don't does gotta it, go does right. It, does it cut down your insurance costs a little bit too with the course? Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. It's just nice because if you don't do it. Then you got to go to the. You got to go take a test and stuff. Like, yeah, you got to go to the ministry yeah. and like take the test. <laughs> yeah, oh, they do it right there way, for you, which is yeah. way worse for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas if you do the course, you get the insurance benefit and you get your license. It, at the it end would almost of the be as if like when you were a kid and if you did driver Ed to like do a driver Ed day and get your license out of it, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Instead of so, like having to go like actually do the test where they make you fucking parallel park in with like the person there with the checkboard and like you know. Yeah, you know the most exciting thing about this for me is Mike said he might get his license now. Yeah, we got a, we got a gang. We're gonna have a gang. We're gonna have a, <laughs> a gang. <laughs> we Windsor are chapter, <laughs> Windsor chapter, Toronto chapter, and Ottawa chapter. Yeah. No, this yeah. is it's, we got one chapter. It's Ontario. Who is Ontario? Yeah. yeah. So is this the is it the Bro Chat Motorcycle Club? Bro Chat BC. MC, BCMC. BC yeah, yeah. BCMC. It's, the, it's the waffle stomp crew yeah. <laughs> so anybody wa- anybody watching who's a bro chat fan who has a motorcycle can join the the bcmc yeah. well, we'll get you jackets go made. we can well we can no we'll, we'll have to jump them in like we'll yeah, be there's a screening yeah. process too yeah, yeah. You get to, we got to yeah, yeah there's, there's an association a, too there's a hazing process you have to go yeah. through <laughs> Yeah. We get and then we'll have to make some. We'll have to make some jackets and merch and sell those. You have to prove. You, you have to prove that you waffle stomp before, or else you can't. You can't. You're not allowed in. Yeah. Um, yeah, you gotta. You gotta prove your heterosexuality. Wait. Wow. Whoa. 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 No, we're not, that that we're not gonna have that rule. We're not gonna have that rule. I thought that was a. Come on, Paul. What the fuck? That was a common rule in gangs. Well, one of the requirements is that you must order coffee from Starbucks. <laughs> which makes you at least the more ex- the more extravagant the order the quicker you're going to get in the club yeah. <laughs> okay so let's be serious for a second mike mike what's the what's the percentage chance that you will actually get your motorcycle license and what is the chance if you get that is is there a chance you'll ride a motorcycle or a three-wheeler the percentages are hovering in the single digits <laughs> <laughs> Eight percent. I thought you were said you were really seriously thinking about it. What the fuck? Yeah, that's more because I told you this is the most I've ever thought about it. So that's I'm, true. I'm that's creeping true. into eight percentile. <laughs> but in all honesty, it's probably hovering around like twenty one percent. But I might do it. Well, I just good, fucking, you know what? I, that's a, I had a bad experience there. when I was little. Oh, did you fall off one or no? Well, when I was riding with my dad, I almost flew off <laughs> twice. Oh, and he fuck. grabbed me and pulled me down. And then, and when I was, I was learning how to ride, like on a, I one of those like up north, like with the fucking dirt bike things. I fucking went flying over a fucking hay hay bale and ate shit. Oh, <laughs> so, fuck. so I'm like, yeah, whatever. Fuck this shit. It looks <laughs> like fun. Would but... you ever? Would you ever ride a three wheeler or would you get a motorcycle? I don't. Know, I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm retarded when it comes to like throttling. <laughs> I oh, you mean like, with, yeah, like, I have a hard time with it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, the, with the clutch and the gears and all that. Yeah. Well, that's the nice thing about the three wheeler, it's just gas and brake. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just a CBT, like straight, like yeah. one, no gears. Yeah, you could I don't buy, think... you know what, Paul, you could buy a Honda Goldwing, those come in automatic. I, I, yeah. I think I'll, I'll, I think I'm going to be just right at home with a three wheeler. I don't think I'll graduate past that. I could see Paul getting one of like the old, like the, like the Goldwing three wheelers. Yeah, I know what you're talking. Oh, you mean the, the, the two back tires? Two back tires, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, I can, I can they, make they, with that. they make Harleys like that. They make see, it yeah, like, like a, a real like, trike, you know? Like my yeah. version, my my motorcycle, they make it in a three-wheeler. Yeah, I usually yeah. see like really old bikers driving yeah. those because they got like leg injuries or something. <laughs> you have to grow your beard a bit and, yeah, have have, and have a gut, but you can do I gotta it. I got to get a tattoo. I probably got to get a tattoo too. I think, yeah, I think we got to go get tattoos. We got to get Growing up, I, we got to get full sleeves. Yeah. Growing up, I had like my the like farm property i grew up on we had a one of the three-wheeler atvs you know yeah yeah fuck those things are so fun man they're so like yeah. you go around any corner even go like five it's just like up onto the side though yeah. <laughs> they're so they're so fun they're so fun to drive 
I've entered my like I want to fuck around with like different motorized vehicles phase. Like, like get, get try and get like an old like Suzuki three wheeler, you know? No, you know what I'm looking at? My brother has a a two seater. I think it's called a Maverick. I don't know. It's like the, it's like off roader, right? I don't know what the fuck it's called. I don't know what the actual oh, name Bassam? of that one is. Yeah, Bassam's off roader. That's a, isn't that a Can Am? It's a Can Am. I think, but I think it's called a Can Am Maverick or something oh, like, like an endur- like an enduro bike. No, no, no. It's no. a four, it's a four wheeler. It's like a, it's like a doom buggy. It's got a cage oh, in it. It's like yeah, a, like a side by side. Yeah, 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 no. yeah. Well, it's yeah. big. It's like it's like an off road car. Yeah, it's a side by side. Yeah, I can't. I can't have side by side. Yeah, side by side meaning you sit side by side. Oh yeah. yeah. So, uh, um, <laughs> I guess that was a stupid question. I don't know what that's supposed to mean though. So so fucking self explanatory. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm a city guy. I do the not definition know is in the name. Yeah. I, I guess, but I, I'm not in the motorized stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I thought about I thought about like paying him for half of it. That way, I can use it whenever I want, kind of thing. Yeah, he can let you use it. Remember, Matty got when your brother, the other brother, rolled it. Yeah, but he fucking rolled it. I would be mad if somebody took my shit and like rolled it. Fuck like it you're up. gonna roll it for sure. You're gonna beat that. I never up. rolled it. I fucking beat the shit out of the thing. I was fine. Didn't fucking yeah. roll it at all. It was totally good. Yeah, I'd... I did it twice. Every did it it's twice with. Hey, did it again. Game, you'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Anyways, what's going on? I haven't talked to you guys in a bit. Ian, how are you doing? Great, good. How's, yeah. how's the how's the hair coming? Fucking straight as a Lego character, you know. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Place that on nicely. Eh? <laughs> I put my I put my helmet on in the morning. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, that's so fucking you know, accurate. like a Lego hair where you just like yeah. snap it on, like <laughs> just put it on the night table when you go to bed. That's the most fucking accurate thing I've ever heard. <laughs> no, this, is like, this is a full slick back right now. I just got it slicked straight back. You sit back. I can't hear you because the mic. I said I got it just slicked straight back right now. <laughs> Lego so character. It's so perfect. <laughs> it's a fucking Jofa helmet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't even, I, wouldn't even need, I wouldn't even need a helmet when I get start riding bikes. Like, I'll get pulled over. I'll be like, this is my helmet. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. yeah this doesn't protect me better than any helmet. Well. <laughs> you know what this is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we were going to ride to Pittsburgh this weekend to the Pittsburgh yeah. Pro. And that yeah, <laughs> sidetracked side because me, sorry for those who don't know, me, Ian, and Ben were going to to ride to the Pittsburgh Pro, and uh, we got sidetracked because the fucking weather is dog shit. And yeah. I, we could probably force it, but like I don't want to just have like, I want to have fun. I don't want to be going yeah. to free freezing cold. And it's like, May, like we have the whole summer to do trips like this. Let's, you know what's like, really, Let's start off with a good one. You know what's really fucked up about it, Ian? Huh. The weather on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is it's hot perfect and yeah. no yeah. clouds. Yeah, that's <laughs> tomorrow too. Yeah, no, I was just like, I couldn't believe it, man. I'm like, fucking the three days following the trip we wanted to go on are perfect. Yeah, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's kind of crap. And then like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday after, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? It's probably a good thing because I know John De La Rosa wanted to go with us. So yeah. we'll just wait and fucking that way we can all go. Yeah. Anyway. Give Paul time to get his, his license so he can drive the fucking, That's you right. know. And then by then I'll have my, my full license so I can just buy a bike and we don't need to worry about it. What are you going to buy? What kind of bike are you going to buy? I don't know. Any suggestions? A Harley. Well, what it's like it's like. Look, I would say get a sport. I like bike. your I like your small Harley. I would drive that for sure. I would say get a sport bike or even like my. I'm not ride. getting a sport bike. Zero percent chance. I'm just saying those are cool, <laughs> right? Because I know people in the comments are gonna be like, get a sport bike. No, the thing is, a sport bike or my low rider are not good for like long trips. Yeah, yeah. No, I have, I have no interest. I have no interest in driving a sport bike like at all. Um, I it's i've driven them enough to know how fucking uncomfortable they are especially if you're a little bigger and i'm not like look i like to drive fast for sure but not so fast that i feel i need a fucking sport bike you know like i don't have death wish kind of speed but like you know i, I want to go quick but i uh i don't want to go that quick can i brag about maybe, my- maybe after a few years of riding when i've been like on a you know a, a like a, a cruiser bike like this yeah like that would be good but that's how is that comfortable not overly eh Oh, no, this is comfortable. It's just like, yeah. you see how there's no fairing on the front? Yeah, so the wind kills you and stuff. So, like, when you go on the highway on this thing, you're like, <laughs> it's like you're a parachute. You, you could you could get a windshield for that, though, and just, like, put it on and off. Yeah, yeah, want. but it would look like ass. Like Yeah. yeah. Like, I it, when, I'm on, I, when I took it on the highway, it's literally like you're a parachute because the wind is just, yeah. like, catching you. It's, yeah. like, it, it's fucking yeah. horrible. No, if you're doing long trips, like, you definitely need a, a screen, you know? But that's what I'm thinking. Like, up where you live, the <laughs> speed limit is, like, 80. You know, people usually do 100. You're not going to be comfortable. On, you want something with fairing so you can like, yeah, oh yeah. just like be comfortable, put the music on. I yeah. don't know. Not eating, not eating bugs the whole time. That's yeah. true too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, um, back to so what? Get, well, what other suggestions? Then, like, what can I get that looks nice, but that's not as big as your full size bike? Uh oh, I got one. You can get. You can get that version. Um, <laughs> the bike. I like. Edge. Like, do you think I would look super weird if I got like a naked bike, like a fucking like Ducati, like triple street or something? You know. Well, it's going to be just as uncomfortable though. I think it's there's a little only, more comfortable. It's a I little think, more comfortable. I think there's only two options for you. You either get like an enduro bike because those are comfortable as fuck for long rides. Uh, yeah, but that looks so fucking old man, you know. <laughs> no, they don't. They're cool. The new ones like the no, Panama, that's like the that's like Panama. BMW like fucking old man dad rider, you know. The other ones with like the stereo blasting out the side of them. Like you no, that's like my, no, that's like my that's, that's what Fuad Fuad has. <laughs> Fuad's got like the touch screen, the fucking stereo on it. Yeah. <laughs> I got mine is like a car with two wheels. Living <laughs> on a prayer, <laughs> live my hand. I turn it I turn it down in the city, Mike. I don't want to I don't want to be that guy. I don't pull he's, to he's a light. He's too embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. You should well, blast, I am, it, all, I don't, you should I don't blast it all the time and just act like nothing's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> No, because I, I upgraded the speaker system, so when I'm doing like 100, 120, I can hear it. So yeah. if I go, if I drive in the city and crank it up, it's fucking loud. It'd be so obnoxious. <laughs> anyway, listen, this is what I think, Ian. Your two best options, in my opinion, are this. This is a Pan America, totally comfortable. Yeah. Never, never. I, I would get that if, like, you and I wanted to decide to like drive from here to fucking California or to BC. Right. And yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably, if I started to do trips like that, hundred percent, I think this would be great. And okay. like that are awesome. The other one is this, uh, a low rider ST, which is the my small bike, but it comes with like a small fairing oh, on but it. Fairing, yeah, okay. It's got yeah, a yeah. fairing on it, and it's got a couple small bags, so it's like it still blocks the wind. You can still still do long trips with it. So yeah. it's like, and it's a nice bike. It's just this cool. fair. This fairing doesn't have like a stereo or anything in it. Hey, those could side I put, bags. Could I put affect... some good like fucking highway pegs on that, or is it too short? No, no, you can put forwards on it, and then okay. get like and get crash bars, and then put highway pegs on them for sure. Yeah, I need to. But get, it's I need like to get nice and comfy on there, you know. I'm gonna take a better see if we get this to come up. You get a better look at it. This is. That's yeah, what I would get it. That's what that's I would get sick. it for you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little smaller. It's got a fairing on it. You can take these bags off if you want. It looks cool um, with the bags, though. No, I know, but I mean, if you want it to go, like, more sporty, you could take the bags off completely. Yeah. <clears throat> but that's what I would do if you wanted something smaller. But the real shit is this. Do you, do you ever wish your big bike was not as big? Never, ever, ever. Okay. So <laughs> I don't, you don't think, I'd like, for some of my size, I wouldn't be bothered by that at all, eh? Oh my god, dude! You'd be you if you bought a small bike and then you rode my bike. You'd be like, I wish I got a big bike. Okay, well maybe like when I'm because maybe look, at, at some point I'll need to drive yours to make the decision. And because look, it's like well, this is a 2020, but same shit anyway. It's not yeah. that much. It's not that much bigger than what I. It just looks showed. better for sure. I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's the weight difference between those two? Do you know? About 300 pounds. Okay, so I mean it's a bit, but. But it's like there's so much more to it because I'm like you still have like this fairing, but now in the fairing as you can see here, like you got like as Mike would because Mike's making fun of me for it. I don't know if you can see that, but there's speakers yeah. here and shit. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's fucking awesome, and you got your highway pegs here. You put your feet up, and fucking chill. And no, you Mike, can, can, the the bike my dad had it was a like a 19. The one that he rode like long distance was like a 1990 gold suzuki cavalcade like as old man of a bike as you can get like this is the biggest old man bike oh my seen. god this is a, this is awesome yeah <laughs> let's show everybody what you're talking about this thing uh li, li, uh no okay go back okay go back one screen yeah uh third row down second from the right third row down second from the right oh that's, that's lit li, this one up there, yeah, there. that that's identical to his. That's awesome. <laughs> that brown? Your dad's it was basically the, the exact same as that, yeah, <laughs> like that, yeah. That's that was it, yeah, like that. Your dad's the best. See, yeah. <laughs> so you got to get because you know what? Yeah. It's like <clears throat> my dad, like, had he rode bikes when he was young, like back, like when he lived, you know, in rural Saskatchewan and stuff like that. And then when he had kids and wife and stuff, like he didn't ride bikes for 50 years. And then when him and my mom split up, he they like split up and within like six months he got his license. And the first time he like really drove it, he just got on it and drove all the way to BC. Yeah. But on like, and my dad's like 150 pounds on like this fucking big ass bike, just ripped right out there, you know? Yeah. 
I mean, that's, I think that's what you, if you want to ride for, if you want to ride and be comfortable, <laughs> that's what you need. Anyway, yeah. dad, I used to drive on the back of that all the time. Like it was comfortable. Sorry, go ahead, Paul. You're going to say something. Your dad's from Saskatchewan. My dad's from Turtleford, Saskatchewan. No way. Yeah. That's where they colonized first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Where the table no, that's, that's his dad's. That's his dad's side of the family that came to like like Quebec City. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That was the fr the French colonizers, and then he moved to like out to farming land in like northern. It's and like they, North Battleford and Turtleford. They colonized Saskatchewan. Okay. northern Saskatchewan. They colonized westward, and it just yeah. erased erased everything in their path. <laughs> yeah. So he, that's that's where he grew up in in Saskatchewan, Alberta. Yeah. Northern Saskatchewan. Yeah, I mean you can look at a map of where Turtleford, Saskatchewan. You don't know where that is, Paul. Do you want me to look I, it up? I, I've been to Saskatchewan a couple of times, but you not should probably know where that is. Well, I, North Turtleford. Battlefield, I happen to know where that's where that is. <laughs> you know where North um, Battleford is? I've heard of it. I never. I okay. Yeah, I know it's northern <laughs> Saskatchewan. I haven't fucking heard of it. Just there was a life. famous athlete from there. Um. Why do you do this? Just exactly. got one like one little almanac <laughs> fact, you know? Yeah, it was a running back. Uh, what? Ruben Mays. Who the fuck is Ruben? Who the fuck is he Ruben had like the Why single game rushing when, record? But I know, but look where you are now. Look where you in are. In what league, though? NFL. You're right. He was great in college too. Look him up, Fred. No, look where the conversation has ended up. I'm sorry. No, I, it's not, it's, it's, I took a little sideways. I how see north, this, how I north is see it? Who this is? Ruben I don't know. North is it? One second. I know it's the top half of the province. So this is Turtleford. Yeah. Tiny. Did you know that, Paul? Do you know where it was? What? Turtleford's, Turtleford, Turtleford's right here. I got to admit, I never heard of Turtleford. There's an actual turtle there. A massive turtle. <laughs> is that what it's known for? Wait, Paul, that, does that give you some reference? There's Regina right there. Regina? Regina. Regina. Okay, who's the guy you're talking about? Ruben Mays? Yeah, check him out. I, I think I got that right. No, I don't think you do. I'm going to blow your guys' minds if I am right. If you just made that name up, that, oh, my God. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Canadian. Where is he from? Whoa, hold on. Right. A Canadian former professional football player who Saints? was running back for the NFL. Played for the Saints. He had a single game. He had a single game rushing record for a bit. I think, I'm not sure if it was, they were North Battlefield. Born, born North Battleford. <laughs> Holy That's crazy. <laughs> Man. I told you, I'm always a little bit right. What is I wonder, I wonder if my dad God. knows, I wonder if my dad knows who this guy is, if this was yeah. like. Like a hometown hero there, you know. Well, I'm sure there's not too many pro athletes that came from. I'm sure there wasn't very many How black people there. To be honest, yeah. that guy. can you answer me? Quite, How does that happen? How do you come across this stat and remember it? I don't know why that stood out to me, but I remember him being from there. Probably because I never heard of it before, and I thought it was amazing that this guy from Saskatchewan was playing in the NFL. And yeah, he, he when did was briefly this, in the '90s. <laughs> yeah, I think so. He played. Um, he had. The, I'm not sure if it was college. I think it was college. He had the he had the rushing record for a while. Like most yards in one game, like 350 oh, yards in one game. You never see that's crazy. Amazing. Like you have to think, like back in the 1960s, like there must have been like six black guys in North right. Battle, Saskatchewan, yeah. you know, and they're probably all this guy's family. There's a guy in the NBA right now from Saskatchewan. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a little more normal now. Like they're bigger cities, but think of like this guy's 60 now. So I mean, he would have been playing like back in the what 60s, 70s, or 90s. Or whatever that is, 70s, 80s. Yeah. yeah. Trey Lyles, Mike. Hmm? <laughs> Trey Lyles. He's from Saskatchewan. Does anyone know who Trey Lyles is? Tell it, tell I do, because I'm a Kentucky fan. He went to Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> he plays. I'm not sure where he plays right now. He does play in the NBA, though. Can you tell us some more facts about Saskatchewan? No, I'm sorry. Oh, that's enough. No, 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 that <laughs> <laughs> Our Saskatchewan fans are probably really happy right now. They're like, oh, yeah, Paul knows everything I, about Saskatchewan. Some I guess there's some friends out there. <laughs> oh, some guy in Turtleford's like, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> If there's anyone that listens to this podcast that's actually from or lives in Turtleford, like fucking be in the comments for sure, because that would yeah. be sick. Yeah. There's no way. Holy I'll send shit. you I'll send you free t shirts. Yeah. I want to know. We'll, we'll all send I'll send you some of my free merch too for sure. Hey, have you guys noticed this about Paul yet? Or is it just me because I've known him for so long? Hmm. Have you guys noticed like if you say a sentence, he'll pick a word out of the sentence and create an entirely new conversation from it? Have you noticed <laughs> that? Different. Like, give, a, We're like, like give an example. Give an like example. Like you just did. You're like, you're like, oh, I'm from Turtleford. You're like, well, you're like, well, it's Battleford. It's near Battleford. You know who's from Battleford? No, no. Ruben Mays. Oh, I, just, I, I said Battleford too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because Ian said North Battle, Battle, I know, Battleford. I know, but it, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I just, this is something I've been dealing with for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> He's good. Like, he's good. At, he's good at segues. He segues right he segues into, into like yeah. these things. Of like I'm like, what the fuck? I have a bunch of useless trivial knowledge. I don't know. I don't know. Why. I don't even know how you got it. You just like every time somebody says they're from somewhere, 
you know a fact about that place? Not always, but often. Honestly, um, with how much weed Paul smokes, I'm I'm surprised his brain can even hold on to any. It's of like this he can recall he can recall it. Like yeah, I think but the long term memory the long term memory is not affected. It's just the short term. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I couldn't yeah. tell you what I did yesterday. Yeah, exactly. But. <laughs> all right, all right. So we got Pittsburgh this weekend. On to some yep. bodybuilding. We've been talking nonsense for half an hour. Pittsburgh this weekend, and Ian already let us know that Chris is not actually guest posing, but he's going to be there. So yeah, that's why it just says special appearance by. Yeah, this is kind of a bummer because I was hoping he was guest posing, and I I wasn't aware that he was just showing up to take photos. Yeah. Um. But Martin gets to jump in with the crowd. Urs gets to jump in with the crowd, and Muhammad does too, because normally it's just the top five or six. So yeah, kind of a treat for these guys. Um. Okay, if we're going to use silly language, but just for fun, who's going to win the guest posing? Because <laughs> every year, uh, the reason I say Derek, every, Derek and Derek and Nick, yeah, Derek and Nick, because every year after the guest posing, somebody emerges as like the talk of the bodybuilding world is like, yeah, which was Derek last his, time, which was Derek. Or, or, well, no, Derek, actually, Derek was the, sorry, Derek was the year that he, before he did the first men's open or two years. If you remember last year, Hunter was the last year was top. Hunter. Yes. Yeah. Because people were like, holy fuck. Yeah, last so, year was Hunter. The year before it was Derek. So okay, if you had to place a bet, Ian, on who's going to be this year, who would you say? What's going on, guys? If you haven't been to Hostile.com in a little bit, you might want to check it out. We got some new flavors, new formulas that I want you guys to see. I'm going to send, take you guys there now. If you go to Hostile.com, you'll see these three new flavors of our V2. This is Hostility Second Version. It is more citrulline, more creatine, no teacrine, so it's got no bitter aftertaste. These flavors are absolutely awesome. It's a hard hitting formula. Every ingredient in the formula is clinically dosed. If you want an all-in-one that has your endurance, pump, focus, stim, all-in-one product, this is it. If you click down here, the second bar, we have our giveaway winner pack that we're, we're giving away with the Hostility Blue Raspberry. If you get the gold sticker, you get the lifter starter pack, which is the bag, belt, and some other goodies. And then if you go to the third slide here, you have our new CDX Lemon Lime. is absolutely delicious. It's a great intro workout, great pre-workout, great post-workout. Wherever you're going to use the extra carbs, this is absolutely delicious. So, guys, this is what I want you to really check out. The grape apple is probably my favorite of these few flavors. And it is a stacked formula. Get to Hostile.com, use code RBP, and get yours now. It's tough to say because Nick's going to be a week out from New York. So, obviously, yeah. he's going to look really good conditioning-wise. But I don't know if like Derek stays pretty lean in the off season. We've seen what he looks like. It might just be that he looks really fucking big, you know? And like when Nick is known for being the really big guy, if someone like Derek, it's like, well, he's in the off season. He's like way bigger than Nick. It's like, you know, it could just be like an illusion it creates because Nick is dialed down and he's like in a leanish off season. Mm. It's hard to say, but it's going to be those two for sure. If I had to put my money on it, Derek is just wildly impressive in the off season. He stays really lean. He's really round. Um, he still has like fucking strided glutes even when he's like 12% body fat. So, uh, I'll have to go Derek, um, just for overall guest posing wow factor with Nick being just because he'll be almost show ready. will be a close second. I think the most impressive person there is going to be Robbie. Who coaches that guy? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We don't know yet, but no I heard idea. he's, I heard he's like three forty something. Yeah. He's supposed so, to be huge right now. So I'm like, I'm fucking super pumped. Uh, cause I think he's just going to outweigh everybody. He's gonna be fucking massive. Now I would say Samson cause he's my boy, but Samson kind of doesn't take these things as seriously as everybody else. And he's probably going to be off. Yeah. Well, I think and Samson I, I also, think, I think he's in his also, downtime right now. So yeah, I was going to say he also competed at the big, the, the starting quarter of the year. So I think he's going to be like, he's in the chill before starting into Olympia mode. Kind of, yeah. you know who I'm looking forward to seeing? Cause we haven't seen him in a little bit. Andrew. Yeah. I heard somebody, I, I can't remember who told me, but they were like, Andrew's put on a ton of size. Yeah, he looked huge when we saw him at the Arnold's in the UK. In the UK, he was big, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, Andrew's been doing some fucking work. So I'm like, that could be the standout too, because he's probably the kind of guy that doesn't lose his shape at all. I wouldn't think yeah, so. Like, no. imagine him Imagine him bigger with the same shape. Right. Like, I, th I think wild. Derek is going to be very hard to be outclassed at a guest posing, man. He's just like, he's got that guest posing look, like where he has that thin skin all year, like, or not even thin skin, but like where he has detail show even when he's not really lean, yeah. you know, like the glute striations, the back detail, like things look a lot leaner than they are. And he's so round with those crazy lats and like, you know, and his legs when they're in the off season are a little bigger and fuller. Um, I, I think he's going to be really hard. Okay. To let me, okay. Let me, let me ask you this. 
if Rami has corrected some of his problems, even 50%, do you still think Look, that? Look, I, I love Rami, and I would love to see him back to a glimmer of his old self, but I'm, I'm not sure how... I'm not yet convinced that those are fixable issues. I know, but just hear me out. Just just answer that question, though, just in case. Just hypothetically. If How old is Robbie? If, I don't know. 37? Late, late 30s? Yeah. If he's even 50% better in the areas like the back and the triceps. Sure. Does anybody out fucking class a 340-pound Rami? Depends what level of condition he's in. Um, if he's a little on the softer side, then yeah. If he's like, if they've, if he's pushed down to try and be like, really make a statement at this guest posing, um, then I think absolutely. I mean, if, if those things are improved, um, but the thing is like when the triceps and the arms are a little flattened out and you're that big and wide, and then you start to lose like the appendages like that. It yeah, starts it makes, to really throw yeah. off the flow of your physique, you know. Well, the waist the waist looks wider when the arms aren't as big. The waist looks wider yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's like, uh, yeah. I mean, I'd love to see it. I mean, I'm, and I'm definitely very excited to see what he looks like. Paul, what do you think? <laughs> well, like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing Andrew because um, I, I, you know, I like well, not, I love who, his... not who you're looking forward to, but who do you oh. think is going to be the most impressive? Is the same thing? Is that Andrew? Uh, I think Andrew could definitely, um, if, if you know, I, if he had because it's the first real break he's had since turning pro. You know, he's sure. been so competitive. He's been so, um, you know, competed, he's competed so often in his first couple of years as a pro. So it's his first break in a while. And going off what, you know, like we talked about, like he looked massive at, in the UK, like in clothing. Um, I don't think he's the kind of guy that ever gets that much out of shape. So I think he could be uh, one of the people that's talked about the most after. Mike, do you think it's stupid that people do this? Or do you think it's part of sports and it's fun to do because the Olympi these are all Olympia guys? I think it's cool. Should I was actually going to say the person I think is going to make a big, big, uh, like when you see him in person, like we saw him at your, at your show is oh, Hunter. Yeah. yeah. Hunter. Like, yeah. I don't think people are like, like I know everyone knows he's a big dude and all this stuff, but he's made some fucking improvements. And like, especially like that arm density and like the, just the thickness of the body. Like it's almost like now you'll see that. And we saw it beside Samson, so it's like we you can see motherfucker yeah. is huge, right? But it's like yeah. now you're gonna stand next to all these guys, this guy, all these other guys, and dwarf them. Like, yeah, we're, Derek's rounder and got this crazy pop and stuff. But when you stand next to like guys who are like an overwhelming presence, it's like, yeah, like, I think like, yeah, he's that. he's bubbly and shit, but and he's all around no. and shit. But that looks like that's a monster human being right there. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I agree. Any, and anyone that saw Hunter in person recently uh, will obviously understand this and like. He was he's fucking humongous right now. Huge. And when you're next to these guys, like Olympia level guys, and if you can sh like if that's noticed next to guys of that caliber, it's going to be a big shock for people. Yeah. But I think Mike, I think Mike's right though because people <laughs> count Hunter out, and they did last year, and he showed up at that guest posing. And people were like, "Holy fuck!" Yeah, yeah. And, and he's think, and he's in great condition still too. Yeah. The thing about Derek is, and I said this on a previous podcast <laughs> we did, is, I think we were talking about who the next Mister Olympia is, and I think I said I would put my chips on Derek. I think what kind of what I said, what I thought was going to happen is kind of happening. He's never had like a full, okay, I'm open. I'm going to eat as much as I can off season. And we're seeing that now we're seeing like another year of growth. Like he had one year kind of, they kind of toyed with, okay, is he going to do open or not? And then he kind of went for it this year. He's got the full fucking year of like, I'm just going to get massive. And he looks crazy. Like he's yeah. super. When we pull up round. his last update. He put one up and put up, yeah. pull up hunters as well. Cause he posted one today saying he was 300 pounds for the first time. Well, this Hunter's is 300 right now. Yeah. This Fuck. is Hunt, this is Hunter's. Uh buys and tries has it. These are this is last year. You can see the density in the chest. The shoulders yeah. a little rounder, arms a little bigger. Legs. Sweet legs. Are, legs. Everything's just a little bigger. Stomach is a little bit puffed out here, but it doesn't look like Yeah, but he's he's eating a lot. Yeah. He's heavy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the back Huge I don't know if there's too. too much difference in the back though, Ian. No, I, don't, I see I see it even in like the development <clears throat> just like the overall density to it, you know. I don't know if I see it. I see the contrast of this this side. Is... That that mid trap is popping out a lot more. Yeah, yeah. The here lower trap. It. Sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And there's here. a little more width in the. Is last he opening there. up more though on the, on the right? Yeah, I think he is. He's posing differently over here because <clears> slightly pinching it together. Yeah, pinching a little. He's a little more open. Yeah, the posing is better. That's I mean, I see it. his arms being a little bigger on this side than this yeah. side. I don't shoulders. necessarily. I don't see a massive difference in the back and the hamstrings. <laughs> more maturity though. It looks yeah. like like more yeah. density, more maturity. Yeah. 
this is where I saw the biggest difference. Because again, yeah. you see the chest, the shoulders, the arms, hamstring. the hamstring. That hamstring. fucking guy, that fucking guy in the comments, Steve dot lifts, that fucking piece of shits in my fucking comments writing nonsense all the time too. I honestly wait, this is what he said for the audio. I honestly don't get how people think Hunter is top class. I just don't rate his physique. Let's look at Steve. Let's take a look at Steve. <laughs> Let's see what a top class physique is. Yeah, oh, fuck, off. fuck off, Steve. Eat shit, Steve. You're... See you, buddy. Okay, yeah. well, Steve's allowed to have an opinion, even though he's uh, tiny. Eat shit, buddy. See you, Steve. <laughs> Fucking comment clown. Okay, this is the thing. <clears throat> okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a second. Steve, <clears throat> Steve's allowed to have an opinion. The problem with everybody having an opinion is he doesn't rate him as top class, but seven Olympia judges did. So your yeah. comment yeah. and opinions yeah. are like assholes. Everyone so has them. So, we don't yeah. want to hear it. I you think... can always say like to me, you know, I don't prefer that look. Whatever, you know, it's a way of saying things. But just be like, I don't see the top physique there. What are you talking? Like about? I don't get. I don't get it. It's like, what do you mean you don't get it? He's fucking three hundred pounds in shape. Like <laughs> you don't. You don't get much, bro. You look like fucking shit. <laughs> he looks you don't good even in look every like pose. you lift weights. <laughs> I don't get it. I just think. Oh I just think. Um, somebody said to me in the comment in a in a, a, a message one time. A DM told me he's like, he's like, look, and he he was relating it to our show. He's like, look, part of the problem is you go online and you teach everybody about bodybuilding, so then they think they know about bodybuilding, even though they've only just started watching it or just you know they haven't been in it too long. So they make these comments thinking they know what they're talking about. But I would I find it strange to say. I don't rate his physique if the guy was seventh at the fucking Olympia. He's been like fourth at the Olympia. Yeah, he's been as high as fourth. Like that's <laughs> set, such a strange thing to fucking say. You could say that's not the that's not the kind of physique I like. Right. Yeah. You can say, like, you know, I like Andrew's physique, it's more aesthetic or whatever. Like sure. It, sa it sounds weird to say I, look, like, there's physiques I like better than Hunter's, but I also think he is wildly impressive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the point I'm getting at, Ian. I think yeah. you have to be able to look at a physique and appreciate what it is, even if you don't like that right. style of physique yourself. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So anyway, okay, so that's Hunter. Great improvements, 300 pounds, crazy. You know who I do want to show real quick before we go on to Nick and the rest is Tim Budesign. Oh, yeah. You he's actually fucking... got it. Got you, um, fucking Stu, Stu's <laughs> last updates were really Oh, good, I saw that today. He looked really good. Gee, he looked guys, crazy. Guys, before good. we go to Stu, why are we glossing over Tim? Yeah. No, we're not. Sorry, it, I was just... It, he looks like anyway, anyway, Tim, on to Stu. <laughs> yeah. no. Sorry, sorry, Tim. I, I over love to Tim. Stu. <laughs> no, go back. Go back. <laughs> is Tim doing New York? I, I think love so, yeah, because so this is 12, 12 days out from the yeah, New York. Right oh, okay. Oh, I didn't notice. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. Is that a camera? Is that when people put that shit in their mouth? Is yeah. that a camera? Yeah, it's yeah, a clicker. It's, it's a it's clicker it? for the camera. It's to take a photo. Oh, yeah. you can't just put it on a fucking timer and have it like. Well, it's just easy. You just hit the pose, click it with your mouth. Hit the pose, click it with your mouth. Yeah. Oh, I never. So you don't I need to set read. timers over and over. It's just as easy. Oh, this must be old. I feel like you could just like hold it in your hand and hit that shot. Be like click. Yeah, I think it definitely would be very easy to hold it in your hand. I don't get the mouth thing at all. I uh, it looks crazy though. I'm super. Oh, I'm, I wasn't slamming on you, Tim. I'm sorry. He's yeah, got just a crazy level of density and hardness. This guy, yeah. you know. Obviously, he's got like a few things that are limiting him. Like he's a little narrow in the clavicles and stuff like that. But his level of muscularity and like hardness and density is just wild. You know. I don't crazy. think, he, I don't think he's narrow. In, you think he's narrow in the clavicles? I think it shows in certain shots, like in his back shots. Maybe it's just how he poses them. But to to me, his in some shot, of them, it looks yeah. His back shots need work. I'll give you that for sure. But yeah. even the front, even the front lats right here, you can see he has yeah. trouble. A certain with flow, it. yeah. A certain yeah, flow. Well, he, doesn't look, he doesn't look narrow there. You're right. But like, go to the front double there. I feel like it's maybe, maybe, maybe it's just the lat the lat width. I guess is what I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you there. So it's not narrow claw. It's just the lat width into the waist. Like doesn't give the best illusion, which hurts him on like the front and back double. You know. I mm -hmm. wonder if his back is a problem or if his <laughs> posing is a problem. Yeah, because there's a back double there. Where? Oh yeah, yeah, that's leaning back pretty far. Let me go. Let me go back to the uh, see if we get some stage shots. I like his physique a lot. It's very balanced. I love his physique. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, side chest. Look at this. This is fucking nice. Yeah. Very very dense muscular like. Yeah, like the front lat that's almost looks chance. like he's just not pulling it out enough or something. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I think he's just missing a little bit of width in those lats, but yeah. Here's something. Look at that fucking con his conditioning's always fucking good. Yeah. Yep. The density through like the chest and delts is awesome. Good abs. And Paul, Great. he's a he's a good looking guy, right? Not bad at all. 
Good, 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 good German boy for you there. Not my cup of tea, but you know. <laughs> I bang him. Oh, God. Whoa, oh, take whoa, that back. That whoa, was it. Yeah, whoa, I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa, that was a little too far. Take that leave back. Leave that in. Clip that. I wouldn't part. actually bang him. No. Too, well, too far. Clip, yeah. clip that. Th- put, clip, clip that. I put that in the bloopers, too. No, no, no. <laughs> leave it in the show. <laughs> yeah, it's just how the lats insert into the waist. It's just a, like a very straight angle, not like a roundness, yeah. you know? And those, even though his quads are huge, like the sweep just doesn't come off the hips, like the way it flows off, you know? I like everything yeah. about his physique, except I think his back could be a little better. Yeah, it's just I, his lats. It's his lats that is just what needs this more. I can't find a fucking back shot. Yeah, There's well. somewhat of a back shot. Anyway, okay, let's move on. You got enough time. Enough time, Tim. We're going to move on to Stu. Look, look awesome, Tim. Good work. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Stu's looking really good. This is good. crazy good, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. look at that. Feathering in the lat. He, and he's so, he's so symmetrical and balanced, too. Like, look at the back double or the back lat. Sorry, the next one. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Like, look how perfectly symmetrical that is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's he a looks... fucking nice back and lad. Yeah. He, uh, he looks like he's in better condition now than he was for his sure. Conditioning is excellent. Yeah. I mean, like, look at that. That looks so sick. Yeah. He's fucking big, too, man. Jesus, fuck. He doesn't, he's another guy that doesn't look as big on the internet as he does in real life. Yeah, he looks, he looks big there, especially in that front lad. He looks huge. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, even in real life, I was shocked at how much bigger. Like, look he at looks. that. Look at the size of that. The lat's yeah. fucking huge. Like, chest yeah. is dense. Uh, Tonio. Tonio looking like crazy Tonio. Yeah. Round Ugh. as fuck. Yeah. Uh, who else? Where's Nick? Can somebody tell Nick not to like, Pull his shorts down to the base. Stop of his showing dick. us fucking dick root all the time. <laughs> <laughs> dick root. Nick, he's, Nick, he's, Nick, he's single, Nick, bro. We, he's got to. He's got to keep the ladies guessing. You know. Nick, we love uh, you, dude. But come on, this is like. <laughs> he's trying much. to. He's trying to show those tapers. Makes his waist look nice. You know. Yeah, I guess. There's Derek. There's Derek. Look at this <laughs> shit. Look at his fucking legs. Fucking nuts. But this is the thing about Derek, and I'm I'm not gonna shit on him at all because I totally respect Derek as a champion. I think he's awesome. I feel like he's gonna lose a lot of this as he gets closer to the show. But that's why I said he'll be impressed for the guest posing because <laughs> no, no, he still no, I'm has not that now. No, I'm not. Someone just, just said in the comments, "Not my cup of tea." Did you see that? <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> no, they did. I swear. Go back to the Fuck pictures. Off. Looks amazing. Where? Just not my cup of tea. Where? Where? <laughs> where? Oh. Where? Is I mean, at least he said. That. At least he said he looks amazing. Next one up. He look. He looks amazing. Just oh yeah, like a very <laughs> a little block, a little too blocky. I feel. What is blocky about? I mean, he's short, so yes, he's like stocky, oh, but his waist is not like that's not what the term. Okay, if you're gonna use the term blocky in bodybuilding terms, you should understand what it means. Blocky means his waist is a, is a square. Yeah, when he whole, pulls up into a front double, he has like one of the nicest V like, tapers there is right now. Like, look at his waist. Like, like X frames. You know, this is not blocky at all. Yeah. No. Like, wait, this is a front double. Like, this yeah, is, watch this, yeah. Tell me this is blocky. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, to, like, you have to know super blocky. To, like, it's a cool to have an opinion, but you have to have like some, some like Pull, pulling a vacuum, tight waist, crazy wide lats, huge yeah. sweeping quads, and he's <laughs> look, blocked. Look at this. Look at this one. He doesn't look happy with his physique. Posing looks way off, very puffy. <laughs> but you have to look at the people that say this no 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 fucking no, unbelievable what, what is wrong man. with you people like no no what this are, is what are you no, looking at guys this isn't my favorite he just <laughs> this guy somehow read his mind and he's like he doesn't look happy with his physique <laughs> what the fuck how do you know that and his posing's off of it and then and then he went and posted it on instagram right what Under a... No bodybuilder is taking a video that they're not happy with and posting it, look especially it, when you have okay, a million wait, look, plus followers. Wait, look at his waist, and then look, the belly's getting a little rounded. Really? It's like flat. <laughs> <laughs> Off season with like a fucking ten pack, you know? know. What? <laughs> yeah. what is going on? It's crazy, yeah. man. That's why it's not even worth reading. But it's some of these it. pages too. Like I think some of the pages like attract those kind of people. You know? Yeah. You know what? Maybe some of these dog shit YouTube channels that do nothing but drama. Maybe they should invest in trying to teach the audience more about actual bodybuilding. No, but they don't want to because they want people to not know. So they leave mean comments. So they get more engagement. Oh, and that way they seem like the professionals that actually. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I I don't even think they care about looking professional or smart or having the right opinion. They just want engagement. Someone to watch. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, like guys, a lot of, I mean, we know pages in history like that have made 
like no press is bad press kind of approach, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. where yeah. they'll just post taboo or like, you know, kind of out there topics because they want engagement. And they, if someone gets into an argument and they're saying offside shit, they egg it on because they want more comments, more comments, right. more comments, you know, All right, more. it's a tactic. Like you can look that up for people that run entire Instagrams just off that methodology, you know? Okay. On to more important stuff. This is the guy I'm <laughs> most impressed with, especially yep. here. Quint is got to be in my top three favorite bodybuilders. Yeah, it looks crazy good, man. He's like, I Oof. think his physique is fucking incredible, man. Mm -hmm. And the craziest thing about this for people watching is this guy is six one, like two fucking seventy or some shit. Yeah, I think when I I I think he was two seventy one or two seventy two in these. But I get the, the point I'm trying to make is he's absolutely fucking huge in person, massive in person. Oh and yeah, he, and it doesn't. I don't think it translates in video. No. No. Um, but yeah, it's so, so impressive. Like, especially a tall guy with legs and calves. Like, what is calves? Like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. His calves are like almost on the size of two goddamn big. Look at the size of those things. Where is that one back shot that he posted that I thought was super impressive? Look at this. Look at this. Is just like his stomach is like. It's, yeah, it's like this is, two, is this this is two weeks ago, so this is like three four weeks out. It's like twenty eight inch waist. Like what the yeah, fuck is this? Yeah, look bubbly at that chest, bubbly lats. Yeah, crazy ass fucking look at those calves are just ridiculous, you know. Big ass round biceps. I don't know. I don't. Maybe with Matt coaching him, I, I I'm gonna say something absolutely insane, but I think Quint has the fucking tools to be a long running Mister Olympia. Yeah, he he has the tools for sure. Yeah, for sure. He's He's just, I don't know, man. Keep, keep just packing on that density more in the back. I mean, fuck, he's there, man. To me, to me, Quint is like a cross of fucking Samson and Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Where is that is one? That, move down shot? for it. You just missed it, I think. Go no, down a little bit right there. This one? Left. Top left. No. This one? Oh, well, up, no. right there. No, 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 no. There's a back oh. lat spread. There's a back lat oh. spread. Go to, the, go to the tag photos. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a back lat spread that's super super fucking impressive that i just want yeah. to show show everybody in case they miss there this it is one. bottom right there it is yeah this is Jeez. fucking crazy man oh why do you have... can you like, can you zoom this a bit like just zoom the whole page or no let's see if i can try oh no, no. whoa wrong way oh my god this is tweaking that's, hard that's as big as i can get it yeah it didn't change <laughs> <laughs> the hand got bigger yeah, everything else stayed the same. <laughs> bigger, just didn't stay the same. I mean, <coughs> Nick Nick's back is fucking nuts. Yeah, but I mean, Qu Quinton doesn't need to beat him on back shots. You know, he just needs to not get absolutely decimated. You're right about that because mm -hmm. yeah, if we're gonna transition to New York, because you know, guest posing is guest posing, and nobody really cares. Well, they they do, and, Qu and Quinton's not guest posing. So the the cool thing about Quint is. And uh, I don't know if this is accurate, but I think he's got him beaten the front lat spread unless Nick has figured out how to do his front lat spread. Yeah. Uh, front bicep could be a toss up. Nick's got a very good front double. That's why I said it. That's why I said it could be toss up because Nick, yeah. way, if he depends, there's there's been times he's posed it with a stretched stomach. He's going to pose it flexed, I think. If he poses it flexed, then I think it's more. It's, yeah. I, I think he's 100% locked in on the flex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so front double, front lat. I haven't thought. Front, front relaxed. Who's 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 the first impression going to go to? Front relaxed. Quint and... Yeah, front relaxed. Maybe Quinn's a little prettier, but Nick's very dense and he sits on those abs really well. So it's tough to say. You know, I, like, look, I, I don't think Quinton's going to beat Nick, but and I think Nick will win majority of poses. But Quinton coming from a guy that's never even won a show to now Nick is like a perennial top five Olympian, like fourth, fifth, third, fourth, you know? To him to even be in this conversation and and get which I think is very deserved um, shows the improvements he's made that he went from never winning a show to be talking about being compared with a top five Olympian. You know, you know, what, you know what I think it, it comes down to. Nick has everything to lose, and Quentin has nothing to lose. Yes, because even if well, Quentin... no, I disagree with that. But why? You know, I think if why? because I think. Hype has been created now, so it could be a letdown in terms of that. But I for Quinton, um, but I think that isn't. I think the improvements are still very visible. 
Um, so I, like, look, do I think when you say nothing to lose, if Quinton comes into the show and comes seventh, I think that's something to lose, you know? Oh, well, okay. I mean, that's an extreme hypothetical. I'm talking yeah. about if the Quinton loses to Nick, whether he's second or third or even fourth, it's not, look, Nick is a strong favorite. hundred yeah. percent. So even if Nick wins the show, but there's talk of Quinton being better. Yeah. That's a loss for Nick. That's a loss for Nick and a win for Quinton. But Quinton, I'm saying, what I'm saying is he has to be good enough to create that buzz. Yeah. No, he just has to be. No, I don't think so. If he loses, just hear me out. If he loses, flat out, Nick beats him overwhelmingly. Yeah. Most people expect that. So that's still not a loss. Yeah, but I'm saying you need to be good enough that people are like, eh, I was I was, expe I was expecting better, you know? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, look, I'll agree with you that he's got to be second or third. If he ends up in fourth, fifth, sixth, then yeah, people are going to be yeah. like, yeah, fuck, yeah. right? But I think... Yeah, I guess it depends who is in... Like, you know, I think if he comes fourth maybe and I, he maybe loses... I should, maybe I should rephrase it. But no, I think I, if he comes fourth and he loses to, like, Tonio and Martin, I don't think that's a big loss. Um, but I think if he's outside of the top five, I think for him, and and that would be a loss for sure. I should probably rephrase it. I'm saying, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is Quinton has everything to gain. Agreed. Like all he's got to do. This is this is he should this should be looked at as a massive opportunity for him right, right. Um, to get a stab at standing next to a top five Olympian and some guys like Tonio and Martin who have recently won shows. Um, and you know Tonio was eighth at the Olympia or whatever he was last year, eight nine. Um, you know to get to stand next to him and potentially beat some of these guys is a huge opportunity. So um, yeah, the opportunity side is completely in Quinton's court, but I think he still needs to be good enough not to divert that into like, ah, eh, we were expecting better, which I don't I, think he's going to do. Let me, let me preface with, I think Quinton is going to be amazing. Yeah. Um. So I'm not saying that I'm, my, my faith is in Matt and Quinton 120% that he's going to be as good as we hope he will be. Um. But after that, we don't know what he's going to look like staying next to these guys. So it's, these are uh, Olympia level bodybuilders, you know, Mike, what do you think about uh <laughs> those two in particular before we move on to any of the other guys? Nick and Q. Yeah. Well, I think that Quentin could win this show. But I wouldn't be surprised if he if he did. I can understand why people will say he like Nick's gonna beat him or whatever, because that's kind of the expectation. But at some point there's gonna be a changing of the guard, like we've talked about with other things too. And it's like you're basically delaying the inevitable, like this kid's gonna be bigger than anybody he's about to step on stage with in the future so it's like are we are we going to let that are we going to give him the confidence to keep pushing for what we know he can become or are we going to keep knocking him down a peg or two thinking him thinking that like oh it's not good enough still it's not good enough still when we all know what we're looking at is about to become something like ronnie-esque so when, when, when you say there's a change in the guard are you saying like guys like andrew just, samson quinn yeah are, i just think that these more like Regan. Like Samson and Andrew, like these like bigger, flowing, aesthetically pleasing physiques are like going to be what's going to take us into the future of bodybuilding. I don't think that the future of bodybuilding lies in the Nick Walkers and the Hotties and the Derricks. Like they're all great, but I think that this more statuesque, like tiny waist, huge fucking upper body, like flowing, sweeping quads. I think that's what's going to be. And I think that's what bodybuilding is to me. So I'm biased. I think that's what it's going to be moving into the future. Just mm -hmm. because there's, there's a progression of like classic is as popular as it is. And the physiques are as nice as they are and as big as they are. And everyone wants to see how these classic guys would do in the open. Right. So it's like, now you can see open guys who look like massive classic guys. Mm -hmm. So it's well, like, why about... wouldn't, yeah, but let me ask you this, Mike. Is it right if Nick is better than Quint, but Quint is the future, like hypothetically? Let's no, say I'm saying I, I. I mean, I don't. I understand. Like, in my, I'm biased. I want Quentin to win, so I'm going to say Quentin's going to win. Right? Do I think that like Nick is probably going to win? Probably, like more than likely. No, no, but that's not but, the question. That's not the question I was going to ask. What I was asking yeah. is, if you're on the judging panel, are you? do you want to give somebody a push because they are the future or do you want to judge what's in front of you? No, obviously you have to judge what's on front of you. What's in front of yeah. you that day on that stage, but okay. how close it is, yeah. the overall like consensus of the, 
of the sport going forward and the criteria of judging, I think more and more like Paul, maybe can speak to it. It's not, if you're going to judge obviously what you see, but it's like when things are looking so when you have specimens like Andrew Jack and Samson and Quinton and these like crazy physiques we've never really seen before, especially in that number of people, like we haven't seen these, this massive amount of big, big dudes with like pretty ass physiques. Right. Mm. It's been like always like, sparse to say the least but it's because, like and, and sorry to interrupt but like because if you think of it you're you're saying it's sparse which i agree because you think of how great someone like flex wheelers looked at because he was like that guy mm -hmm. like flex is crazy but you put him next to andrew or samson like it, it's gonna look not nearly as crazy you well, know he's like 220 these are, these are big yeah. these are yeah. 60 pounds heavier and in better condition you know Look, they're always with the, equally they're with the, equally as nice shape yeah. they're the people that like we used to stay in the past like oh imagine yeah. exactly imagine imagine cutler had the waist that ronnie had like, <laughs> imagine that like this guy had that and, and he was 20 pounds heavy. like these are the guys that are these that are the guys yeah. yeah they're fucking they're mutants and they've evolved to be what it is that what we always thought never was possible is now possible so like it's gonna be like the battle of the freaks on stage mm -hmm. and it could become down it obviously still staying with the freaks in terms of muscle density and muscle quality and like guys like hottie and derek and stuff like that this small compact frigid frames holding massive amounts of muscle but i just see it like evolving like everything in sport evolves and everything in life evolves and i think it's just going to be it won't be it won't be based off this new york pro but it's like yeah. if if quentin walks out of that show no matter where he places i guarantee you more people are talking about quentin the day after the pro than nick walker no matter what happens whether he wins as as, and, as but, and he wins pay. every shot, it's still going to yeah. be like, who the fuck was that big motherfucker? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy to look at on stage. Cause yeah. that comes into it. And we're all, we all have to admit like bodybuilding is a freak show at the end of the day. Like we can all say, Oh, this guy's aesthetic and he's got this and this. It's like, no, we want to see the freaks. I want to see this fucking thing walk out on stage and be like, Whoa, like Marcus rule didn't win a tons of ton of shows. Right. But the motherfucker walked out there and you're like, I remember exactly what he looked like at that show because it yeah, was yeah. the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my own, like in my own, like he was the with first, my own two eyes. Like he was the first pro I ever saw. I never seen anybody that big since. He's yeah. the first pro I've ever seen in real life, and the biggest pro I've ever seen in real life at the same time. <laughs> it's like, so it's good. There's going to be people that are coming into the sport, or guys that are younger than us that are coming up that are seeing a guy, that, like in your case with Marcus. They're, the first time they're seeing a guy like that is, is Quentin or Samson. And they're like, holy fuck. Or, an, yeah. or Andrew or Rita. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Any, anybody in those, in the, in that kind of tier, right. Even like Hunter walks out on stage. Like, I'm not kidding you. Like I never told this story and I've, I would never even told the Hunter. I got back into bodybuilding and giving a fuck about body building and even paying attention to the sport again because of Hunter. I thought you said, like, I remember, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I remember, but I remember vividly because it was COVID. <laughs> And I was training at a friend of mine's gym because we had access to a gym. So, and I, <laughs> I was like, I was boxing and I was doing security and stuff. So my mind, like I kept, I kept like a, an eye on bodybuilding. I knew what was going on, but I wasn't deep into it. I knew like what was happening. And I remember I just stumbled across, like I stumbled across these videos of like of Hunter and I didn't know who the fuck he was. Cause I was, I wasn't that into it where he was like new on the scene. I was like, and it just like reinvigorated my like love for bodybuilding because he reminded me of dorian yates yeah at that time just yeah. because like the dense the dense muscle and the grainy muscle and the, the way kid he trains like, yeah yeah and i was just like fuck man I'm like there's yeah. there's people like this in the sport again like yeah this is like really this is really how things are and then i realized that like he was a kind of an anomaly at, in, to some degree but i was like <laughs> It's like originally made me want to train again. Not that I wanted to be a bodybuilder again, but I was away from that style or thinking of training. And then I shifted back into it and gained like fucking 20 pounds, 30 pounds and started doing what I was doing again. Cause I had been down to like 260. I shot back up to like 290. Do you know what I mean? Cause I was like, I was reinvigorated by seeing a guy like that train. Yeah. That's why it was oh. so funny. Cause we had like a run in. I made a video where I think he, he took what I said as, as being like, as like kind of a dig at him, but it wasn't a dig at him. I just, I said, in a, I said in a video, like you guys looking, you kids looking at Hunter lift weights. Don't think you can do what Hunter does or that if you do what Hunter does, you're going to look like Hunter. I'm like, Hunter's Hunter. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of work. And that's a lot of time. And he, I, he, I don't know how he took it, but he was like, he came up to Olympia and I was like, Oh man, it's nice to meet you. And he was like kind of agitated. And I was like, 
why is he mad at me? <laughs> I was like, what, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> and me and Nico looked at each other like, why, why does he upset? Like, he seemed like he was mad. And I was like, I love that dude. I think he's great. <laughs> I was like, Paul, but, yeah. what, uh, Paul, what do you see happening between Quint and Nick? Um, well, I got to, I got the, I, I got the, the chance to judge Quentin a couple of years ago in Toronto against Joel Thomas. And it was kind of like, at the time you could see Quentin's potential and how great he's going to be one day, but you know, kind of like, cause you know, we were talking about that earlier, like, you know, what do you judge on stage? Like what's been in front of you or what's the future going to be like at that time, we, we, you know, I remember it was Gary Udit, the head judge, and we were kind of de- debating that cause we saw the potential in Quentin, but you know, at that day we decided, you know, like the yeah. best man on stage today should win in Joel one. But right. I, I, I think that. I think Quentin's well on his way to becoming one of the best in the world. And I think he's going to reach that status very soon, but I, I don't know if he's going to be able to stand up to someone with Nick's density just yet. Um, I think he's, I think he's going to make an impact, a huge impact and people are going to talk about him, but I don't think he takes on Nick yet. All right. So before we, before we um, get away from you, Paul, I want to ask you about Martin because you saw Martin in Detroit. And do you think Martin, you know, this is the first time Martin's going to get the stand, a chance to stand next to it, you know, Nick was third place at the Olympia. This is the first time Martin's going to get to stand next to somebody like that too. Mm-hmm. Is are we overlooking Martin in because we're looking at Quint, or is is no. Martin going to be the one that's going to be the one compared? Oh, that's you know that, that Martin's Who, definitely going to be in there. Let me rephrase. Uh, and he looks me, better than he did in Detroit. Let me rephrase. Yeah, I certainly think Martin and Antonio guys, will be in the mix. Let, let me rephrase yeah. the question. Let me rephrase the question. Obviously, the first call out is probably going to be Quint, Martin, Nick. Uh, Tonio, Stu, maybe Angel, who knows? The point I'm trying to make is who is the guy that's going to stand out the most standing next to Nick? That's what I guess is where I'm going with it. Like, well, Martin... I think it'll be Quentin because of the vast difference in structure. Yeah, but there's a pretty big difference. Like, Martin, when Martin walked out, some people said Phil. I didn't see Phil. I saw Dexter, like with the really round shoulders yeah. and the short waist. Yeah, what'd you call him, Wexter? I called him, yeah, well, you called him Wexter. <laughs> yeah. Wexter. The, white, the white Dexter. No, yeah. but, um, but I saw like a Dexter Jackson and I'm like, oh yeah. fuck. Like is I that see the same thing. And when I talked to I talked to Boss of Outlaw, I had him on the podcast. He's certain that Martin's gonna be at least second. We made a bet, we really? made another we made another bet. Oh yeah. So I, I'm just saying, like, out of all the guys that we know who are gonna be in the first call out or think are gonna be in the first call out, who is gonna stand next to Nick and show the most? And or is there gonna be a wild card like Angel or like Tim that's gonna jump in? I think, I think Stu's gonna push Nick. Really, I think Stu, I think Stu's going to be. I think Stu's going to make a lot of trouble for these guys. Yeah, especially at that that last update you I guys, saw. I think he's really big and really hard. That guys, that everyone you, other than Nick. What? You just uh, you interrupted Paul. I was trying to give Paul his five. No, minutes. I, didn't I know. No, that's okay. No, go ahead. To... <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, to... back to Ian. Back Paul. To Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Paul wasn't even. Paul wasn't speaking. Go ahead. Yeah. I was trying to give you your five minutes because everybody else had a chance to talk about the show. So I'm trying think, to get your opinion. I think what you're going to see is the first call, Nick, Quentin, Martin, and um, Tonio. And the second call is going to be like Tim, Stu, uh, Angel. So you, um, you, so you don't agree with Ian and Ian and um, Mike? They think that Stu is going to like be a wild card. I don't think so myself. I, I think, think he so. looks great. I think he's improved, but I, I don't think so. Not in that, not in that lineup. Ian, That's go ahead. Opinion. What were you going to say about Stu? Sorry. I just think that that <clears throat> everyone after Nick, I think from Quinton to Stu to Tonio and Martin, I think any of those could flip flop between second and fifth. I don't I, think I, I know. I, those think, are... I think Stu. I think Stu could be as high as second. I think that it's not like oh my god for sure that Tonio and Martin and Quint are going to beat him. I don't. I don't think that's a definite by any means at all. No, no. Listen, I know, and those are kind of obvious statements. I guess I'm trying to play a game here. I want. I'm trying to put you guys on the spot. And say if you had to pick who's going to compare with Nick the most, and who's going to be the talk of the show after the show is done, out of those guys that are going to be in that first call out, we all know they can flip flop. Well, I don't your, think anyone. I don't pick? think anyone. I don't think anyone other than Quinton really can be the talk of the show, really, because they've all been seen on stage already. Like, like Martin was already seen in at your show in right. what's going to be better lighting and better videography like that. So he's going to not. He might be better, but I don't think it's going to show up better to the masses than it did at your show. Mm -hmm. So I don't think people are going to be like, wow, he's so much better. I think we already saw him better, amazing at your show. And I think that hype has been achieved now. Um, I think Tonio as well. He's, you know, been done a couple of shows this year. I think we've kind of seen what Tonio has to offer at this 
given time. I don't think he's going to be 25% better in five, six weeks no. where we're going to be like, holy fuck. I think the only people that really have that upside potential like that are Quinton and Stu. I think it's Quinton and Martin. Because Stu... I don't see how Martin can achieve that, though. This is this is why I say that... Uh, look, I'm not saying either one will beat Nick. I'm no, saying, I, don't, I, I think Nick will win, for sure. I'm yeah. saying the ones that I think are going to get the best rub from standing next to Nick are going to be Quentin and Martin because, and, and I don't know how much Stu has improved since last year, but Tonio beat Stu last year. So unless he's improved dramatically, he Tonio, has yeah, but maybe Tonio has Tonio improved as well. Like that's the thing. Like, yeah. And then how much more, how much better is Martin than Tonio? So now that's what I, that, that's so the I, matchup I'm looking forward to. Honestly, right? that is the most interesting matchup to me is Tonio and, and uh, and Martin. That is yeah. the, the one that's the closest and the most interesting battle to me is those uh, two. To me, that's third and fourth the battle. I agree. That's, that's the battle. That's, that's why I see it playing out at least. We'll I'm, see, a, I'm a huge Tonio fan, but I think he gives up too much mass to Martin. Yeah, I don't. Well, think that's why I can't wait to see them next to each other. I don't though. think it's going to be as big a battle as you guys think. I think Martin. You don't think be, so? Eh? I think Martin will be better than Tony. Well, yeah. I, yes, but in that same breath, Tonio beat. As long as he's in the same shape, he was in. But Tony, Tonio beat Vito, and Vito and Martin, like to, Vito was bigger than Martin. Like yeah, Martin but, was better. Yeah, but, but but Ian, me and you sat there prejudging. We both had Martin clearly in first. Well, I think he was. Cl- yeah, I think he was definitely the winner. Right. Um, but. But it was also online and through pictures, it was relatively divided, which I'm not saying in person I agreed with. Right. But Vito looked amazing, and Tonio also beat him. And and Vito is very big and very muscular, and he won the most muscular award at your show. So I don't think that he's going to be, Tonio is going to be severely outmuscled by him. Um, you know, and I think he's got some yeah, shots. I think, saying, I think the thing that's going to hurt sense. him the most is, is posing. What? That doesn't make sense because you're saying what? Vito beat or Tonio beat Vito, but so, yeah. did, Martin, so did Martin. Yes, I know, but Bigger, what I'm saying is says. Vito Vito didn't outmuscle Tonio, and Martin is no more muscular than Vito, so Martin isn't going to outmuscle Vito yeah, um, but, Tonio. But he's far, it well, doesn't make sense to me. Well, of course it does. He's as muscular as Vito, maybe a little. No, less he's not. Than, well, less than the legs for sure, but in the as, legs, yeah, as muscular everywhere else. He's sure. more. He's more complete, and he's got better shape. Yeah, and but then Tonio. The reason has Tonio. Way, the reason Tonio beat. Tonio Vito, has a way better and way more muscular back and nice round reason, quads too. So the reason Tonio beat Vito was because he was more complete, and more detail, and that's the same and, reason why Martin beat him. Except exactly. Martin, except Martin is bigger. That's yes, but right. I don't. That's think what that I want to see next to each other, though. To see. Yeah, I don't think the discrepancy. In, the discrepancy in size we're talking about is like fifteen pounds. It's not thirty pounds. It's not going to be mm. so dramatic that it's going to be like you know. All right, let's do a side bet on those two alone. Well, I, I think... Are we going to place this? Look, are we gonna, are we gonna I, I, I absolutely think Martin will beat Tonio, but I okay, think that we it agree. Will... <laughs> well, I wasn't disagreeing that he was going to beat him. I was saying that I don't think that he's going to be outsized by him. I definitely do, because there's nowhere else he can beat him. They have the same shape, and they have and Antonio has more detail. If he beats him, it's going to be because he's, he's bigger. Well, I think there's some other things to that, and, too. And, I think... and they have the same... And they have similar conditioning. There's nothing Martin I think has Martin better has... than Antonio, except for muscle. Better posing. Better posing, yeah. Okay, better posing. I'll I think that. he's a little. I think he's got a, a few shots that are a little better. You know, the side shots. I think he makes a big difference against them. I think Tonio hurts himself in a few shots, and I also think Tonio's like kind of lack of detail in certain shots, where Martin's like polish will be a little bit overwhelming. Look, I do agree that Martin is bigger, but I don't think it's so much bigger that he's going to like I'm kill just, him with size. You all know? I'm saying, all I'm saying is that's going to be the deciding factor because their shape is very similar except martin is a little bit more complete with wider clavicles yes uh and their detail but all these things add up there's details a little similar except tonio has a little bit more detail especially in the back but not but not in the hamstrings and glutes yeah but the main difference to me between the two of them because they split some things so the main like okay martin's going to beat him in the side shots tonio's going to beat him in the back shots i don't think tonio beat him by much in the back shots though back double he will for sure Martin's got an amazing back double, man. I don't know if I agree. Okay, we'll see. I'm just saying the yeah. main difference, like you're, you're splitting hairs. The main difference, but, but is I think they're that close that it will be splitting hairs. And, okay, but the, yeah. <laughs> we're arguing nothing. We're arguing the same points. You're you saying <laughs> you're saying the size will be the difference, and I'm saying the size will be the difference. We're saying the same thing. I'm, I'm 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 not. Okay, sure. I'm not I saying the, the size will be the difference. I'm saying that I think 
I think that the, uh, there's other factors in there in terms of the posing level of detail in certain sh shots. Like, yeah, I think the posing, you think the Martin, size. You think Martin has better detail than Tonio? In certain areas, yes. Yeah, but they just trade the areas. Like, there's certain areas where Tonio is better in detail. I think the only area that Tonio has better detail is in the back, but Martin's is still excellent. I think you know? Tonio's. I think Tonio's abdominal section, uh, potentially his chest and his back, and his shoulders are rounder. No, I disagree with that. Mm, that one's tough. I mean, Martin could be rounder only because he's bigger, but they're yeah, not. Yeah, I, 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 I think. Look, I agree that the muscular, the size will be a factor, but I don't think it's going to be like the. Sorry, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't think that's going to be the one and only thing that differentiates them. I think there's a little bit of like four or five factors I'll is what I'm that. trying to say. I'll give yeah, you I think like he'll be a little bit bigger. I think he'll be a little bit better posing, especially in the side shots. That'll be a little more. I think he has some good detail in some areas where Tonio doesn't. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of like three or four things that add up to being a better bodybuilder. Yes. All right, I'll give you that. Cool. Uh, okay, so I went ahead and picked your guys' picks for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah wonder how you got those hey all right so this is picks. changing over there on me yeah i gotta change mine too would you put quentin fifth for him this is what you told me you wanted i never told you quentin fifth <laughs> you said angel was gonna win <laughs> i could not say that <laughs> dude you've been going on about angel for like two weeks i haven't spoke about him once <laughs> today <laughs> today <laughs> <laughs> i do think though it's he's going to be battling with uh, all right all right, Stu all right. For, nick uh, are you changing this nick quint martin tonio angel Stu. you have Stu in sixth what about tim i want to put Stu in third gonna yeah i'm gonna put Stu way way higher for sure yeah Stu in third does that mean you're putting tonio where uh hello uh Martin, I want Tony after Stu, and then Martin. Oh, that's a mistake. I feel very comfortable with the show. And Angel. then Angel. Angel. Angel hair pasta. Angel. Right. What are you doing, Jerry. Nick? Hey, Ian. What are you doing, Ian? Nick, Quentin, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to swap <laughs> Stu and Angel for sure. Um, maybe I, uh, I don't know if I want to put Stu ahead of Tonio. That's a, that's a fucking ballsy call, you know, mm. it is ballsy. I think he beats him in a few shots, but I don't know if it's enough it. and he's definitely going to be bigger. Do it. Isn't it ball? <laughs> <laughs> what? Do it. Like, do it, do it. Do you, it. Love, you love, you love Stu. Yeah, I do like Stu. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to stay there. I'm going to stay there. I think ball. Angel's okay. winning. Quentin second. <laughs> Angel's not winning. Nick. Oh, Nick, sorry. Nick you wanted Quentin. you wanted Nick here in fifth. No, I did not want Nick in fifth. Okay. Well, swap Nick and Angel, please. Nick. Angel. And then swap Stu and Angel. Why did you say that to begin with? What? I didn't know Stu was going to be in the show until just a few. You days. know what? You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just. I'm going to go out for my boy Stu here and put him ahead of Tonya. <laughs> I'll be going That's... seven or eight. Like, uh, how deep are we gonna go here? Because like, we still got two, Tim Budaheim. I don't want to leave him. Six, 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 we'll six. six. We can, oh. we can all put, we can all put Tim in seventh if we'd like. Go, Paul. Tim, you do six. Okay. Nick, Quentin, Martin, Tonio, Stu, Angel. That's exactly how I see it playing out. Okay, Nick. Okay. Although Wait. Angel might beat Stu. What do you want? Don't so. You well, don't for now. Leave you... it. We got another week still. I can think about it. Nick, Quentin. What if you're not on next week? I'll make a guest appearance. I'll make a cameo. All right. What the fuck? Would I'm you not going to let you. That way you're going to lose. <laughs> I'll call Ian's cell phone. <laughs> uh, Nick, Quentin, Martin, Angel, Tonio, Stu. Angel's no. good for it. Shut up. I was going to put fucking uh, Tim here, but I'm not. I don't like his back shots that throw me off. Yeah, these but guys the, all have really good back shots. That's a tough one for him. Well, you're the same as Paul. Oh, you just copied me. Yeah, I just copied you. That's why. S switch to I'm done. Angel, I'm done. No, I'm, fuck you guys. I'm done doing that. Last time I did that, and you guys were like, oh, you lost. I'm like, no, <laughs> fuck you. You make it interesting. You change yours. Follow me, Fuero. I'll make sure you can do well. Yeah, because you win any of them. Shut up. 
I feel good about this one. Uh, yeah, I want to fucking do something. This is like this is a good fucking show, man. Holy it fuck! Is. This is one of the best shows I think I've ever seen. Where you guys, you have someone like Angel who's been third at the second third at the fucking two twelve Olympia. That's in sixth yeah. goddamn place. I yeah. think Angel could be fucking third. To be honest with you, I don't think so. I don't know, man. He's fucking he's thick. He's crazy. He's thick, but he's he doesn't have the nicest shape. His waist but, is like yeah. a little on the thicker side. I think, I think in this show, structurally, structurally a little small compared right, to these we'll guys. Leave it there. Line leave... up like this. That just, that shape yeah. is going to show up. I think we'll leave yeah. it there for now. Okay. Uh... All right. Anything else to talk about this week in the news? Bodybuilding news? Yeah. Is there any really, really good news that you guys heard about that you want to talk about? Hmm. Okay. No. Let's, let's do questions. No. Paul, how did you and I meet? Uh, at the strip club. That we were probably oh. looking at. <laughs> <laughs> snatch, snatch you right out of there, big boy. I was on my way out. I was on his way in. And what? Did you introduce yourself? Uh, well, I, I kind of saw him at the gym. Um, I, uh, you know, I'd seen him at the gym a little bit, so I knew who he was. Um, and you then he's trying to work. You guys met in the locker room at the strip club? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we were both working the door there. Oh, I, I, I had just I'm... stopped working there, and uh, I still had a girl there, and uh, Fuad was working the door there, and uh, so I went in there to see her one night or something, and then he was like, "Hey, is that your girlfriend?" And I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, I'll keep my eye on her. You're going to see your girl while she gets naked he's on like, stage. Is like, that your girlfriend? He's like, yeah, I banged her. Yeah, he's like, I'll keep my eyes on her. <laughs> yeah, he probably did bang her. I probably never found I said, her. I told him, I said, I'll watch her real close. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a funny story about that. It, she wasn't a stripper, but my uh, bachelor party, um, you know, there's 10 guys there. Some of them knew each other. Some didn't, you know, or they knew of each other, but hadn't met, whatever. Um, One of my buddies is dating this girl at the time, and... The, you know, people are sitting around chatting and he he just pulls up a picture on his phone showing somebody else or talking about this girl. And one of my buddies that wasn't privy to the conversation is kind of like walking by and sees over. He's like, oh, I used to fuck that bitch. And this is like, this guy's like, this is this guy's like serious girlfriend. Oh my <laughs> God. Was the guy just fucking around? He's like serious. Well, he's dead serious. So, oh, fuck. <laughs> so then this was the first, this is the first night of the bachelor party. So then this guy obviously said this to his girlfriend and then it, you know, obviously caused a big kerfuffle between him and his girlfriend that kind of put a damper on his weekend to say the least, you know? Oh, man. So like we were going out at night and he had to fuck, he was staying back and arguing with his girl, which was unfortunate. That's you know? horrible. They're no longer together, but he oh. has in a, been in a long-term relationship with a girl since. Okay. If you had to nuke China or Russia, who are you choosing? What a weird question. Yeah. We don't get the oh, I think we're so dependent on China. You got to go with Russia. <laughs> we need somebody to make our phones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what Ian goes to right right away. He's like, he's gonna make our. Like, I mean, I feel like the whole shit. world, the whole world, like infrastructure, would be fucked if China got yeah. like destroyed. You know. Uh, hey, big fan of the podcast. I'm 17 years old. Lifter got my testosterone checked, and it was very low, about 200. Would you recommend oh. replacement therapy, or just do as much as I can naturally? 17. I would start I mean, Andrew. 200, 200 at 17 is fucking crazy low, bro. Start Anadrol right away. You might yeah. be a woman. It might be yeah. a woman. <laughs> Your body's telling you something, bro. Just transition. Probably no, uh, yeah. Listen. I mean, I would cert I would certainly go see an endocrinologist and see okay. what they have to say about it. And if they're going to put you on, you know, if your is your FSH and LH like crazy low? Like, what is causing this low? You know, do you need to do a thing of Clomid or or HCG or something? I don't think you know whatever you need to do to try and stimulate it. I would do that. If that doesn't work, then I would look into doing HRT because you can't live at two hundred. That's completely unreasonable. Like 300 is like bottom end. So, I mean, 200 is just like crazy, you know. Why do bodybuilders avoid milk and dairy? Most uh, body, most bodybuilders can't stomach it properly. That's why. And plus, yeah, it's probably I, think, I think for a lot of guys, a lot of guys don't like, uh, anyway, I'm going to say something that's going to make you sound old. But when I was coming up, a lot of guys didn't like mixing their meals. Like they wouldn't mix their proteins. Like if they're going to eat a meal, they're going to eat chicken or they're going to eat steak. Or whatever. So if you're like, you're gonna get your protein all from milk, you're gonna be drinking like a liter of fucking milk to get the right amount of protein, and then your stomach's gonna be fucked. Yeah. So it's like instead of drinking like a small glass of milk and having a steak, they would be like, I'm not gonna just fuck the milk. I'll just eat more steak. Yeah. Like, do I think if you digest milk completely fine, which I think a lot of us don't digest it well because we eliminate it for so long. Mm -hmm. I think like since I've retired, I have milk 
daily yeah, and I, also- I have zero issues with it but when i was bodybuilding if i would eat ice cream or have milk i'd shit my pants i could go yeah. eat you know i could drink a gallon of whole milk today and i'd be completely fine you know so the amount the amount doesn't bother you zero uh, anymore no really Huh. No, I, I, I drink, I drink, I make my protein shakes with like fair life milk. I'll use it in the creamy. I have dairy all the time. Like I eat yeah. cheese on shit. Like I have no, yeah. no issues with that at all. I think I a lot of, but when fat. I didn't have any of it in my diet, I had this significant issue with it. Go ahead, Paul. Sorry. Like skim milk will ruin, will ruin my stomach, but higher yeah. fat milk won't. Really? Yeah. It's probably the sugars and shit. It's the have. sugars. Yeah. 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 The inflammation is causing issues with, but yeah, it's probably the reason why people don't. It's like, you know, the sugar content, a lot of that dairy, it's calorically kind of dense for what you're getting out of it. Um, so if you're going to uh, allocate your calories somewhere, there is better options generally. But if you're in an off season setting and you digest it well, um, you know, like Fuad said in the, in that kind of sense of like, you know, if you want to have a meal and have a glass of milk with it, you know, or you want to drink a glass of chocolate milk to get a little extra calories, a little extra protein, some carbs in, I don't see any problem with that as long as it's not impeding your digestion to eat the rest of the meals. Don't do I'm, anything that's going to cause that. Yeah. I find a lot of bodybuilders don't do that. Like they have trouble eating a lot in the off season, Yeah, but they'll try and eat a lot of one thing. Yeah. So they're like, oh, I have trouble getting, let's say you tell somebody to get 300 grams of protein in a day. And they're like, oh, I can't, it's too much. I can't do it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but that's because they're trying to get it all from steak, for example. Like they're trying to- In, doing, in, in one meal, you mean? Yeah, yeah, they're doing like eight or 10 ounces of steak in one meal. Yeah. For most people, that's like way too much. Like I can't eat 10 ounces of Split steak. Split it up. Yeah, but I'm like, if you added, like you said, if you added some milk or if you added some other, or if you had like a whey yep. shake with it, now you're like, okay, yeah. I'm- I'm. Yeah, so, say have like five ounces of meat with maybe yeah. like- you know, 100 of grams of Greek yogurt yeah. with yeah. a bit of yeah. protein powder in it or, yeah. you know, some of the milk or whatever you want, something that, you know, still you can digest well, but to, you know, mix up the the sources. Um, I, I do that now and I find it a lot easier to tolerate for sure. I never yeah. did that. I just, I made myself eat the 12 yeah. ounces of steak. Yeah, I definitely so, had times like that for sure. I used to have a hard time eating that much meat. Back oh my God. Yeah, it's so hard. 10 to 12 you ounces used, in a meal. You get used to it. You yeah, can, I never really got used you, to that once you Once you stretch the you don't get used your to stomach, you can fucking... You need anything? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, would you rather master all sports or instruments? Instruments. Sports. Oh, no, I'd rather be a rock star. Yeah, I'd rather oh. play instruments. What the fuck? This guy's so contradictory. If he picks one thing, he's like, I want to be able to dunk. And then we talk about this, and he's like, I want to play I'll... the piano. But you I know? also like... said I wanted to rap. That's true. He did. So you're going to be a rapping pianist. <laughs> a rapping dunking pianist okay so no, if you got to pick between dunk, dunk oh, I can't dunking, dunk, right? you're just picking between one or the other not all sports or all music just dunking or playing the piano no oh, dunking like or, no dunking or rapping dunking or rapping sorry rapping really, really? Do you actually yeah. find rapping that good I, of a talent I wish I had to have? The why do you want yeah. why do you want to rap so bad but like what, what are you gonna that. what are you gonna do are you gonna rap on the podcast if you know yeah. how to rap that's what I'm wondering. Like, I would getting... I would just interject it here and there in conversations. You, know, you just start freestyling. I, I, I don't. Just, I don't. Yo, check it. Yo, check it. I, I would just came third. I don't think I any actual really good rap. rappers do that, though. You know. So you would. So if you let's say you could rap as good as like Eminem, you would like, just start. Okay, Biggie. He's not as good as Eminem, but you should go down to Eight Mile tomorrow and see. You what would you just can do down you, there. What would you do? Would you go join like rap off? Run, go, rabbit, run. Would you go join like rap battles or like what would you do? No, I would just make a career out of it. You'd make a career out of it? Yeah, I'd be a rapper. Do you think anybody would buy your albums? If I was good at it, yeah. What would you rap? No, what would you, you, know rap there's a, you know there's an image that goes behind it, right? They're not going like to buy like, yeah. how, how many people are going to buy Uncle Paul CDs? I got Yeah, I've, 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 I've done some shit for that. <laughs> have, you ever, like have you ever thought about what your name would be? No, I had never gone that far with uh, with envisioning it that I thought of a name. You know how like shocked you know how shocked I am that that's the one thing you want to do. Yeah, have, that's crazy. You know, I, I always wanted to rap. I have, but I have like zero. Like if you when, said, you're, in, when you're in your car alone, do you do you get after it? Like when well, I have a couple I, raps. Totally does. Yeah. This guy. Has. This guy's been. This guy's been married to a part black woman for way too long, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Fucking dunking even, and rapping, and you yeah. know. But even before I met her, though, I always liked. Uh, well, that's probably why you went for her because you you like saw something in there that you wanted. You know. If you said, yeah. if you said, I wish I could sing. I'd be like, okay, like that makes sense. But like, just rap, like yeah, like who the fuck yeah, like that? I don't know, like uh, like what else to like a biggie rap. I just wish I could have that ability to rhyme. Just like well, to rhyme well, well and like flow well. Yeah. But why can't you though? If somebody wrote it for I you, you could I fumble just... my words. Yeah, but you could read it. <laughs> 
No, you could, you could practice. Been, you could practice and get good at that for sure. There's been one rap that I've mastered so far. I know. Yeah, I've we know. Rap. I've heard you. We know. Rap. We know. Yeah, we know. yeah. <laughs> I've mastered that one. <laughs> it's like a horrible rap too. It's not, it's it's not like, a horrible Kanye. It's a great it's rap. Kanye. He's not like a fucking rap master. It's, it's like, yay. <laughs> yeah, it's yay. Um, um, why yeah, not? But... Why not singing? Like, if you said I want to sing like John Sakata, is that his name? John Sakata. I don't want a melodic that? voice like that. I you don't want, want you, like you want a melodic voice. Yeah, I don't want it to like. Do you want a voice like Biggie, a fat black dude from the Bronx? <laughs> yes, <laughs> a fat motherfucker with G's like me, exactly. <laughs> oh my god, Paul, you're so fucking weird sometimes. Okay. Uh, anyway, I would pick instruments. Mike, what would you pick? Uh, sports. Sports. I wish I could fucking play the guitar and play the drums. And that's yeah, I would love I would love to, but if we're picking all sports, I gotta pick that. That's just such a fucking flex. Like, especially when you have kids too, just like to fucking destroy them in yeah, every sport, it, you know? It, it is a flex, but I think it's a flex too to be able to pick up any instrument and be fucking great at it. Yeah, but that your opportunities for that are way more few and far between. Like I don't go to like house parties where people just have a piano and I like get down if there you, and impress if people. I if, if you came over, I would have a guitar and I would just start playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just whip yeah, a, I, whip I, a I could also be the like back of your pickup truck. <laughs> I could also be like at the gym. I could also be like at the gym and like there's a bunch of kids playing basketball. I'm like, hey, you want to play? You know, hop in. I just fucking like NBA All Star these fucks. You know, that's mm-hmm. the only that's the only sport you really where you can show off your skills on public. So yeah. you're gonna get a okay, football what, scrimmage what, game. No, but like you just yeah, do anything. I mean, you could fucking go run like crazy. Like you could be an Olympic level marathon. You could be like for... every dickhead golfer and practice your swing on air in public. Yeah, you could do whatever you wanted. Every sport. <laughs> You know, you could just get on. You could get on the treadmill in the gym and just run like a fucking two-hour marathon. You know. Yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say something's gonna piss off a lot of people, but I don't care. I think I am I am far more impressed by people that can play an instrument really really well, more than like somebody who can play basketball really well. For example, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. It just doesn't blow my mind. I'm like, okay, cool. You're really athletic and there's a ton of skill. But when somebody like there's a guy on TikTok I follow that's a drummer. It's like it's fucking wild, man. It's like yeah, no, I agree with that. Like, what's that? I, I we're probably talking about the same guy too. That fucking he's like Arab looking or something. He's got a black beard and fucking yeah, the black beard guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's just insane. I'm like crazy good. Yeah. Or like if you when you see Metallica in Russia, yeah, and you see or I I watched the Woodstock uh, documentary recently, ninety the ninety nine Woodstock. Oh, the only. Yeah. And when you see yeah. limp when limp you see Limp Biscuit on stage and the fucking yeah. crowd is like all yeah. moving yeah. at once. The only like, bad thing, though, is if any any four one of us four had that much musical talent and we'd ended up in some kind of rock band, we would all be dead by now. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Those people are Over, all worse than we are. Overdose. Yeah. Overdose. Overdose. No, overdose. They're, sure. they're, they're worse than us because they did it. But we are wor- we're bad and we didn't even do that lifestyle. So if we've been, been thrown into that, into yeah. like the rock and roll world, oh, my God, we would have been fucking dead 10, 15 years have ago. You got, have you guys seen the clip of Metallica in Russia? No, put it on. Can we play? Oh it? God, I, it's like I don't think I can play it, but I can show you the clip. It's fucking madness. I've never can seen. You play it, can you play it and just mute it? Meta- yeah. What year was it? I don't know the year. One second. Yeah, here it is. Nineteen ninety one. This is the wildest shit I've ever. The only one that's better than this, or not better than this, is close to this, is the ACDC one. I sent you guys a while back. Are. when i watched that 99 woodstock thing i'm like man that was like the last good generation of music i look haven't introduced look at, look I at introduced, look, yeah look it's at, ridiculous look at the amount of people there holy fuck it's probably like two hundred thousand people there like can you imagine being the fucking any one of the band members and this is yeah. like what's going on yeah. i've stood yeah. on stage i stood on a stage in poland one time when i worked for who i worked for and it was like that it was nighttime and it was just it was people as far as you could see. Like, listen, there was listen. no end to the people. One second. I don't think there's any sport I could do that would give me that feeling that they have, like playing those instruments on that stage. I imagine running out to a massive college football stadium, college football, or like lining up for like an Olympic, think about, Olympic think about, 100 meter final. Think about yeah. this. Think about this. College stadium is what, 80,000 people? Yeah, 60 to 80 yeah no it's like eighty thousand. that's average in a it was over 100 running out to eighty thousand people is probably like insane but there's like i think there's like three hundred thousand people in that fucking place really yeah. there's that many there Jeez. and the thing is they're all moving to your movement right yes 
it's like it's like the Woodstock thing I watched. It's like Fred Durst was like making them fucking lose their shit by like just making do hand signals and making them take their tops off and like <laughs> it was just wild, wild shit. And I'm like, I don't know. I just the ACDC one in, in uh what's that arena is it starts with a W. Wembley. Wembley. Oh what Wembley. Yeah. That one was fucking wild too. Anyway, okay. Way too much. You, might be, you might be selling me on being a musician, but they're both sound <laughs> pretty awesome. Uh, if you know that you could get back to your best version physique without any health risks during and after, you would just need to put all the work, training, diet, PDs. Would you do it and get on bodybuilding stage once again? That's for you guys. Why? You're old and retired too. Oh, I wouldn't get back on stage now. Just too no, but like if you had no health ramifications at all and you could get back your best physique you've ever had now just by working for it would you want to i would say right sure. now no i wouldn't sure why because of your kids and life life and wife yeah. and stuff yeah, yeah but because my kids mainly i think my kids would think it's really weird <laughs> or they would think it's cool as shit why would your think kids so? think it's weird because i'm old so yeah. if they got a fucking <laughs> jacked ass <laughs> jacked ass 55 year old dad that'd be the coolest thing ever yeah but it's on stage in his posing trunks i don't think my daughters would think that's cool yeah i think so just they're just not exposed enough to that to see it as a sport. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's kind of weird still, I think, especially seeing their dad up there. Yeah, know, it's like, like old men in bathing suits on stage. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I would, 100%. I don't know really... if we talked about... I don't... Oh, sorry, go ahead. If no, I was in my I... 40s, still a different story. But being in my 50s, no, no. You're like... I don't know old. if we... Ca... You're like five if, years if older talked... than me. Yeah, you're in your 40s. You're five years older than me. You think that that's like the cutoff is 50? Yeah, both there, yeah. It has nothing to do with your health. I know, but like I said, maybe if I didn't have kids, I, I definitely would think of it different if I didn't have kids. But mm -hmm. uh, I know my kids would think I'm weird. So your kids think I'm weird is what you're saying? No. Well. <laughs> <laughs> did, your, did your kids ever like ask when I after I slept at your house, like who the fuck that guy was? <laughs> yeah, well, my, my, my youngest daughter was super curious. Oh, who is he? You know, where does he live? Like just super curious about you. Well, but, especially because uh, like I'm, I'm a good chunk younger than you, so I'm like a guy that much younger come sleep at your house. They're like, "What the fuck is going on here?" Yeah, you know? but my wife's a lot younger than me too, so you know. So that's true, I but mean, that's their mom, you know. Yeah, but like my, you know, all like her her siblings oh, are her friends. The same age, yeah. you know, like yeah. my, her, their uncles and aunts and stuff. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess the kids that age, we all are just old to them, anyways, you know. Right. Yeah. None yeah. of my friends look old either. Like most of my friends are either younger than me or about the same age as me, but they're in good shape for their age. So none of my friends look old. So I don't yeah. think that there's that shock factor. No, I think what he kids. what he said is probably the most accurate is after a certain age, everybody's just old. Oh yeah, like kids. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm 33. Like to a to a 12 year old kid, I you might as well be 50. Kid. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, that's true. I got, I got a little gray in my beard, and I'm a fucking big old man. Like I mean, it's all the same shit. Because I remember yeah. my dad used to hang out with a guy who was like 20 years younger than him. But you know, when you're like. When you're 60, your friend's 40. Yeah. Fucking cares. No, I mean, my, right. my, my dad's best friend that like we hunt with and stuff is 15, 18, 20 years younger than him. And yeah, like yeah. when I was growing up as a kid, like I knew my dad was a little older than him, but I still thought he was like an old man, you know? That's how I was. Yeah. 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 That's how I was too. Um, <laughs> what do you guys think about everyone on the Menace podcast hyping Quentin up saying he can beat Samson? I don't think this is, I mean, they're all professionals. Like Dennis, Dennis, Milos, and Chris are all professional <laughs> bodybuilding analysts. And I don't think personally what they're saying is wrong. I think Quentin has, has a very a, high ceiling, yeah. has a, has the potential to one day beat everybody. But Samson also has a potential to one day beat everybody. So it's like, there's a, there's it's, not, it's not wrong to say either thing. It's like, it's a very accurate statement to say Quentin has potential to be Mr. Olympia. Yeah. It's Agreed. also a very, it's also a very quick, accurate statement to say Samson has potential to be Mr. Olympia. So it's like, Agreed. why would there be anything wrong with it? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys think about main gaining? Can you build noticeable muscle or is the bulking and cutting cycle the best way to make progress? Mike, what What's do you think? Term? Main gaining. You never heard that before? No. Basically like, it means like main veining. It means gaining muscle on the least amount of caloric. Oh, so, well, at maintenance. At so maintenance. trying to stay lean. So trying to stay lean while you're getting bigger. Pretty much. Pretty much. Basically. Yeah. 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 So uh, Mike, yeah, what do you think? Maintaining a level of conditioning and gaining muscle. Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I think it's a smart way to go about it. I don't know if it's necessarily smart. Why? 
I mean, it's health wise, like blood pressure wise, doing all this digestion wise, I guess you could say that you're being intelligent about how you're putting on weight. But I mean, at some point, if you're trying to put on a certain amount of size and get to a certain amount of muscle, you might have to like morph out of that super leanness or that leanness that you have and put on a little bit more size or body fat than you might think you need just because you're gonna have to consume a calorie you probably never had before right so i'm not against anybody whatever works for them works for them i don't these terms that people have for stuff are what drives me crazy like <laughs> like main gaining yeah i like guess <laughs> ian what do you why think do I, why does they call it that like yeah because yeah no right. I, I i agree the older i get the more i think you know that there's benefit to staying leaner and i also think i think that as long as you're eating enough that your training is optimized and you can perform as well as you need to in the gym. Like if you're perform, if you're not eating so low at any regard that your performance is impeded and you're training so that there can be or eating enough so that there can be, you know, enough fuel for your training and progress within your training. Um, I think you could still absolutely make progress. So I don't think you need to be in like I, a 2000 calorie surplus isn't going to make you grow like any faster in necessarily in any regard, as long as your training is still progressing, you know? I think that's pretty much what John Jewett said that kind of, cause I've always been of the, of the mind that like, you got to get fat, not fat, gross fat, <laughs> but like 10 to 12%, you know, like you're not going to get huge being 6% all year round unless you're genetically. Yeah. Well, 10 to 12 is still it. very lean, but. No, well, this is the thing. This is where you, why you have to define these things because to me 12 percent is not lean well right what what do, you, what do you think Derek lunsford is in that video that we just saw i i, I don't know ian don't yeah. try and put me on the spot for fuck's sake leave <laughs> <laughs> the fuck alone man i'm trying to make a general statement he's like okay. <laughs> i usually consider under 10 percent to be lean okay? yeah, single digits i think i've been i i know what i look like at 12 percent, and i don't think that's lean i feel a little puffy a little chubby, the 12% to me is not lean. So, but what I was going to say is John Jew was on the podcast and I asked him this exact question. He said, basically what you just said, Ian, which was wherever your performance is not being impeded. Yes. That's where you should be. The so most you, progressive. So if you off. gain, so, so basically, sorry. So he was saying, basically, if you feel like your performance in the gym is best at 15%, then go up to 15%. Agreed. If you feel like it's best at ten percent, then stay at ten percent. But he, that's good advice. But but in in taking that information from him, I still believe if you're too lean, you're doing yourself a disservice. Whereas also, but, I, but also if you're too, fat, you're too fat, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're over fifteen percent, you're probably also doing yourself a disservice. But there's a lot of factors about like what if someone's just got a super fast metabolism and they can't get above ten percent no matter what they. Eat. No, no, well, I'm, that's why I'm saying there's genetic anomalies, yeah, right? But yeah, I'm saying yeah. like you, if you're looking for like a general, yeah, like. That's why it's more performance based than actually like lean. Like when John says, if your strength and pumps and everything are optimal at fifteen percent, yeah, then that's where you have to be. Great. Yeah, that's. I think that's a good way to, to tell somebody. Yeah, my yeah, my most progressive off season I ever made. Like I had ones where I pushed the food too high, and there yeah. was diminishing returns where yeah. it became more difficult to train. You know, doing a lot of like you know the stuff like bent over rows, deadlift squats became very very difficult you know like your cardio is bad you're really heavy it gets really hard to train hard um and then i've done off seasons where i tried to stay too lean and your performance doesn't get as high as i could like so say there's off seasons where i was like 265 and there's off seasons where i was 305 yeah. versus off seasons where i kind of stayed like 280 285 where i was still leaner i was eating where i was like it wasn't super duper hard to get the meals in, but it was still like not easy. Mm -hmm. um, but my performance in the gym was like, you know, I could get in the gym and perform as good as I ever wanted. And it was progressive and I didn't feel like I was slugged down yeah. or under eating, you know, I never, I never did a lean off season, but I did off seasons where I was two ninety, and I did off seasons where I was like three Oh five. Yeah. And the, it's weird. The off seasons where I was three Oh five. And also I have to preface this because this, this rule doesn't apply to everybody. Like, I think when you're younger and you're starting out being taking in more calories and getting a little bit more fat is probably more conducive to being young and being a beginner than it is to somebody who's been doing it for 10 years. Cause yeah, I but I also think it's still within the confines of what, if you're getting heavier and your training is suffering because you're trying to push the food so hard, you've pushed too, too far. No, no, I agree. I'm just saying I got pretty heavy in my off seasons when, when I was young. 
but I consistently put on 10 pounds of stage weight every year. So it was like, okay, yeah. this, this works for me, so but I know, it. but I know I tried that. Sorry. Just one last thing. I know yep. I tried that when I got older it doesn't and, work. And what I found was, and this is just a made up term that I made up, but you fight, you get to a point of like oversaturation yes. where it's like, you're, you're eating so much that your pumps become your better, pumps and better. They become better and better and better. And then all of a sudden your pumps start to get really shit because yeah, you had that over because you're, you're now you're insulin resistant and your pumps are shit and you got to like get your insulin sensitivity back. And I never understood that then. So I just kept eating through it the yeah. whole off season. Yeah. So, so go ahead, Paul. Sorry. So when you were like, you said you've gone up to 290 and then you've got even, you know, you went other times where you went to 305, like maybe a little bit, you know, more body yeah. fat. Did, yeah. did it, was there a difference in results as to how much tissue you put on those years? Well, at that time I was already older. I don't think I put on much muscle after like 32 or 33. The, the, the stage weights would vary like three to four pounds, but you could never tell if it was a conditioning thing, a fullness thing. Like mm -hmm. I was, I, I sat between 255 and 260 for like the last three or four years of my career. Yeah. So those were the times yeah. where I, I would get to 290 and I would be relatively like, like Derek Lunsford lean. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a little bit puffier than that, but like I felt good at 290. I was like, oh, this is a good, like, relatively great. Yeah. 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 Um, but then I'd go up to 305 and I'm like, oh, I feel like oversaturated. I feel sluggish. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. yeah. The, the off seasons yeah. where I got the heaviest, I actually ended up the first or like first one or two showings of the year were always some of the worst I've had in my career. Yeah. So, like, like the year that I stayed a little leaner. Um, and my performance was crazy high in the gym was the season going into 2021 where then I like won Tampa, won Texas, Arnold, yeah. like right off the hop of the year, I was killing it. Yeah. The year before in 2020, I failed to qualify for the Olympia. I got way bigger, way heavier that off season. And I had to come down. I had to really push hard to get down to the show. It made it really difficult. Um, and my look of the first was the one where I lost a hunter in Tampa and I looked fucking yeah. abysmal, you know? But you know what the difference when I, when I was saying like it, about being younger, Paul, you know we talk about sometimes about having a cheat meal. Yeah. And when you when you'd have a cheat meal, you'd be full as fuck when you were a kid. Like you'd eat yeah. a pizza, and the next day you'd your workout. Yeah, you would be stop getting that when you get older. It went right to your muscles. And, and now you don't, right? So what I meant when I was saying about being younger is like I never. Why had... Why is that? Well, I think it's just a digestion thing. I don't know if it's a. I don't know. I don't know. I can't explain it. But what I was going to say is, I never felt that oversaturation when I was young, even though I was fat as. F there was one off season. I was two eighty. It was a second year, my second year of bodybuilding. I was 280. I went on stage at 205. Yeah. That's how yeah, I, that's, st I still that's got that. I still I got that when I was young, though. I had one of those where I got not fat, but fat for me in an off season when I was young. And it just was like everything went downhill. I yeah. never got, I never got like that oversaturated insulin resistant feeling before. Yeah. Like, I got a once under, under, the, under 25. Between like, like 2015, 16. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, this mic thing is really driving me nuts, man. It's like I can't hear myself. Can you just I... play it through the speakers and unplug the headphones? It doesn't sound totally normal. Okay. Well, like, why do you I... need to wear the headphones? Because I I did a podcast with Regan once. It was the only time he ever came on the podcast. And there was a reverberation. Oh, okay. And I had to fucking delete the whole podcast. And I'm like, I looked up the reason. It's because I didn't have headphones. So I never did it again. Weird. Yeah. It was like a buzz? Huh? It was like a no, buzzing no. sound? It, it's like it would be like echo. If I'm talking, it would oh. talk back to me. Yeah, you could hear it like twice. Oh, I hate I don't that. Know if... I hate when someone has to be on speakerphone. I hate being on speakerphone. Right. Um, I don't know if you've talked about this. Sorry, I just had a little uh, sidetrack. Maybe I could, we could get Paul's input um, about them changing masters to 35 now for men. Well, that's been that the North Americans for a while now. We just brought that to Canada. Um so it's it's not brand new like in the U.S. I guess, but uh, well, that was that that was at and at the NPC level it was already thirty five like in the U.S. At North Americas they've had thirty five. So wait, 40, just North 40, Americas, 40, or what about like NPC nationals? The best of my knowledge, just North Americans, but I don't know because uh, because I, I judge North Americans when they when they had that, so I know. I, I, now, I have to ask the question: Don't we all do we agree that it's kind of crazy having thirty five as a masters? Like that's like prime bot like that's that's younger than samson you know like yeah that and that's what that's the age has always been for females um men was always and for females look I, I i'm not trying to be sexist there is a difference i think a woman at 35 physique wise versus a man and women with children and you know all these things i think it is absolutely different 
Um, but I think a man is not even close to getting into his physical prime until like 30 to 35. So yeah, to have yeah. masters, like you have like, you know, a, 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 what's the word for it? Like a handicap going into the masters. Right. Um, well, it is. It's easier to win a master's category can I, can than a men's open heavyweight. Yeah, it does for can, sure. Can I give you the reason? Well, it's a money reason for sure. Right. That's it. Yeah. More pros. That's that's um, the only reason, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, the main, um, yeah, the main. I don't agree with it myself. I wish major, it was still. The fun. main reason is they get now they get a guy to go. Oh, I want to do open. Oh, and I'll do masters. And masters. So they get two yeah. classes. Yeah. Yeah. I personally wish it was still forty. That's where I think it should be, but. I, I just hope they'll bring it down to 30. Yeah, I, th I think for men, it should be 40 for sure. I agree with women being 35 because I think 35 as a female competitor is a bit on the older side. Um, mm -hmm. But I think if you look at the Olympia, like 75% of the top guys are fucking 35 to 38, you know? like Yeah, mo most men hit their peak between 30 to 35, I would say probably yeah. in, in yep. that range. Yep. Good question. Uh, nope. If Fuad had a son the same age as Paul's daughters, would Paul let him, <laughs> let him date them? No, no. <laughs> What what if his what if his kid was like a stand up kid though my like kid, not like him my kid would I would so encourage my kid to bang your kid because I would hear Fuad talk shit to me every day about his son banging my daughter. <laughs> Fuad so had a I son, would... he would be an absolute fucking menace. Yes, <laughs> yeah, he would bang your. Fuad, but Fuad would be a strict dad. I know that he'd yes. be a very strict dad. He'd be a good kid. But, but I'd he, be strict Fuad to would... make sure that he took your but, daughter out. But he would do. do you shit think? My daughter, do you think he would be a really strict dad? I don't know. Yeah. You see how yeah. he is with his dog. I think he would not be. No, I think I would be. He's pretty. He's strict with his dogs. I think summer would be. I think summer would be a very strict mom. I don't think you'd be a strict dad. Oh, I think I, think I see it the opposite. I think you'd see a little kid and you'd be a fucking sucky goddamn mush ball, and you would not. You'd be just like you are with Cade, and you'd be so sucky. And and summer would be the disciplinarian, which is I think what it would be with Melissa and I as well. I'll yeah. be a terrible stern dad. Melissa will be way harsher. I think I'd be so? out of my kids. 100%. I, I think Flo would be harsh. Yeah, on a on a boy, maybe not a girl, but on a boy, no, he'd be. He'd if be I had a girl, strict. I would be butter. Well, you never, yeah, then that, yeah. She could do whatever the fuck she wanted. So I mean, but a boy. Okay, so then maybe, maybe I was just thinking. I'm trying yeah. to. I guess I was thinking with a daughter, but if I had a boy though, I would spank his fucking ass every day. <laughs> yeah, you beat him for sure. You definitely beat him. Okay, I can see that. I see with a girl, you would be a huge suck ass. With a with a boy, you could be would tough. Yeah, you want yeah. discipline or punishment? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Abuse or discipline? <laughs> uh, okay. What's one niche supplement that you guys use and will defend till the death? Boron. Yeah, you do, like, you do like that shit. Why do you take boron though? If you take, you're taking you take you're taking TRT. That's useless. That's what I it's thought. Good. It's good for my sex drive. I swear by it. Oh my well, God. I guess it's freeing. This. It's freeing up more like free tests. So I mean, maybe in some regard, you know. But I yeah, I've talk, noticed I a difference since I started taking. It. Paul talks himself into these things, and that's not maybe, really. It might reason. be a little placebo. That's I don't not, know. <laughs> I mean, I, I've really, read, I've read that there is really some the negative effects it. with taking boron and stuff too too much, though. So I'd be what, careful with that. Wait a what, what's the negative effects? I don't know, but I've read some. Th I remember reading some stuff on it that, like, in terms of hormonal stuff, that like taking it too long or too much can mess with certain things. Maybe wait, I'm wait, completely can off I just, base. Can I, can I just? Paul's not being. Paul's being a little disingenuous. What do you mean? Paul's main reason for taking a lot of these niche supplements is anti aging. That, but not boron, though. Not boron. Not boring, no boring. It, it doesn't have an anti aging. Boners. It's just for your boners. Yeah. <laughs> you know that because it starts with a B. <laughs> Paul, if you're into anti aging, how come you've never been someone to like go do like Botox and stuff? I'm not, I don't care about my skin and shit. I just want to, I just want to feel good. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. I'm not a Botox kind of person. I, I, it's not, it's I've not considered about, it once or twice, but I don't think I would do it. He's never been like vain about his anti aging. It's more about yeah. health, health anti aging. Okay. Yeah. Like metformin is an anti-aging drug that I use. Yeah, yeah but that's no. uh, but I've heard some negative effects of that too. Yeah, but I, I know you've told me that, but I've tried to look them up and I don't I think find it was, them anywhere. Uh, I think it was Doctor Hotchkiss that told me about it. What? What are you saying? Exactly? I think, message, I think message, realistically, message. you should ideally you should be taking none of these things. Right. You know? Why? <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> try to take pharmaceutical back drugs up on like, that one <laughs> yeah i don't think any pharmaceutical drug is going to make you better i think they can stop things that are occurring if they're occurring i don't i don't agree with the sentiment to take drugs to try and improve yourself like that in terms of like health things i think supplements in some regards maybe but like i don't know some i guess metformin i mean that's the same as like taking berberin or something so maybe i'm just speaking out of my ass like you know well where i got the idea first was dr david sinclair i watched a couple podcasts that he was on and he's a big advocate of it so then i did my own research on it and i brought it to my doctor and he agreed with it and what is it's your, actually the what only is your, what does your own research entail i'd like to know that 
I Googled some. I'll listen to a few oh. more podcasts. <laughs> I just don't like I the love, idea. I guess, I how me, awesome is met for me? <laughs> Sold. I guess the idea of just like taking and, and look, because obviously in my mind, I see some kind of distinction between these pharmaceutical drugs and like taking fish oil. Um, but the idea of taking a pharmaceutical drug that I think is benefiting my health forever is just seems like a fucking weird thing to me, you know? Yeah, I, I can understand that. Um, but like it's, it's uh, from what I've found about it through my research. Yeah. I'm Googling. Paul. Um, I don't think it's a waste. I think anything that he creates could, good habits. He could be completely good. right. So yeah. Even yeah. If it's, it's the only drug in the world that is prescribed for anti-aging. Yeah. Can be prescribed for anti-aging. What is? Berberine? Metformin. metformin. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I heard some cancer shit about metformin. Be careful. But I've read the opposite. Message, yeah, doctor, see, is... message Dr. Hotchkiss. Okay. I Tell think him. I follow him. He knows you because he watches the podcast. Okay. See, but like the, the, the realistic, in my, in my mind, it's like, shouldn't your body be able to if it's like healthy and optimized, be able to do whatever the metformin is trying to accomplish without it. From what um, I, it was supposed to something to do with your um, what does your research what does your research your, tell you? Tell it's me, supposed to do with the mitochond the cell mitochondria. How it's supposed to um, oh fix your camera, bro. Oh, no, no, you're good. I like it. It's like a, no, I don't like it for it. I can't stand it. It's like you're in heaven. Yeah, I know it is. Like I'm kind of spiritual, but um, no, um, it's something to do with your. Um, your medical, your cell mitochondria how it's yeah. supposedly helps to metabolize it so that yeah, it... I, I have heard this can kind I, of stuff. Can, about can it before, I actually, but... sorry, I want to interrupt for one second. I told Paul this the other day, I was watching a, a TikTok and they had this doctor on and he was listening to this. He was saying, what did I tell you, Paul? Was it a week or was it 72 hours? The fast? Yeah. I think it was 72, three days. Was it? Seven? No, I think it was a week. No, I'm, I'm confusing the percentage. It was a week. He said, if you do a one week fodder, he said the studies, the study that he did or sh read showed that if you did a water fast for one week, it had a, people who had a 70% reduction in cancer rates in That's, their, I, I don't, I look, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a guy, he was like actually in a doctor's coat too. And he talked about it. Like, at a, at a, like he was at like a podium. Is that the video? It was an Indian guy. Is that, is that, yeah. See the about? thing with this is in that, I have a trouble and, and the TikTok world gets you with these because guys can like say they're doctors or something and doing this, but I, there is so many people out there cherry picking and misinterpreting the living fuck out of studies to try and get business or clicks or views, engagement, whatever it is. Like they're taking a study that will be like in mice when this happened, you know, one out of 16 mice their cancer was reduced when they didn't eat and only drank water. It's like, yeah, but it doesn't mean that that is like a cause. It's a, a definite thing. Or they'll say like training with this type of, you know, at this level increase this and this, but it's like, yeah, but those, the study group is very, is not like our study. Like there's so many nuances to these okay. things oh, that, just you know, like minute. there's, not, there's studies that contradict everything all the time. I'm so not, it's like, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. The only reason it does make sense is they're saying, you know, how they say autophagy is, is what kills off like the, dead your, your dead cells yeah. in your body. Yeah, but I I, ag I agree that there's like, probably a benefit, but saying 70% reduction in cancer from just not eating for a week well, is wild to me. I just did a really quick search and I guess they're doing more studies on it at Cedar sinai Sure. So there's probably something to it if they're doing more yeah. studies on it. Yeah. And it would make sense if, if if it's like, if it's killing dead cells or... Look, I, I, I could agree that there maybe would be some benefit to it, um doing it once in a while or whatever in some small regard um doing them very you know irregularly not like a, a super like often thing but to say a 70 percent reduction in cancer is crazy and like how long were your studies was this like just when they did like a like what and what was the what was the Listen, marker was i know people... i know ian i know yeah. i know studies can be misinterpreted yeah. did these people it. already have but, cancer but are we just measuring already... like a reduction in c-reactive protein but like what are we measuring here but you there's know? also but there's also studies that have, i've seen that already show that reduction in carbs alone has shows that it, it slows cancer sure because cancer feeds on sugar it should, doesn't yeah. um yeah. doesn't igf igf one also cause cancer to to well, cell pro oh, proliferation, guess. but growth like, hormone and converting to IGF will increase cell proliferation. So if you have existing cancer cells, it can cause them to grow yeah. faster, but it won't cause them. Look, a ketogenic diet is, metabol is metabolically similar to fasting. In both cases, Metabolic your body 
metabolically. Thank you, Paul. In both cases, your body breaks down fast for fuel, but cancer cells can't adapt as easily. So it's like, this is Cedar sinai article that's come out. Like this is already like mm. something that they're looking into. So I'm, I'm not you guys saying think that... that you could fast for seven days. I could no do way. That. No way. I don't I know. Make because, it a, you know. I couldn't make it two fight. days. If I had, if I got diagnosed with cancer or something like that, you know, then but that's maybe what I, I asked could. you. Remember, remember, we we're in the car coming home from the gym, and I, I asked don't think you, it would be very hard for me to be honest. Listen, if I don't think I think I could do it too. I think if a doc, Mike, if a doctor sat you down and said, Mike, this... no, I'm just speaking in general. No, I'm no, no I know, I know. General, if I was like, but, but if me... I was gonna die, of course I'd do whatever I could. But yeah, I'm I think saying like on a also sitting here, like if we said to each other, "Don't eat for a week," no and you win ten thousand bucks, and no one cracked. If you guys all chip in three thousand dollars, I'll do it. No. How are we gonna hold you accountable? I'll give you a hundred. I'll, I'll give you a hundred. You need you a camera. On, no, I week. need that camera on you all day. I you got to stay I'll wear a GoPro week. on my head. I want a GoPro day. pointing down at your mouth all day. <laughs> <laughs> Just put a camera in his mouth. <laughs> I think yeah. I, honestly, I think because Ben did. Uh... Every time your hand goes near your mouth, I get to shock you with a shot collar that the <laughs> GoPro is attached to. What did Ben do? Ben did seventy-two hours or something like that. Ben yeah, said I think after, Ben did three days. Ben said after the first day, it's it like, goes away. Yeah, he's like he wasn't even hungry anymore. Yeah, yeah. first like he said first like two, of, day two and three, I think is the worst. Yeah. After that, it goes better. Yeah, he said after no, he said after the first day he was fine. He said on the third day, he actually had to tell himself to eat. Yeah, but you know, like don't you start to get sluggish? Like no fucking food. He said his, his productivity I think it goes to the his opposite. Yeah, it's like I, it's, I imagine it does at first, but then at some no. point you got to hit a wall. No, no. His body. He told What's me your body he, running on. Well, you have a well, lot of fat cells and shit. It's not like you're you fucking... still you have fuel in your body that it can break down tissues and fats and muscle tissue that it can break down to feed off of for sure. So how long Dude. does it take to your body to like digest what's currently sitting in your stomach from the last time you ate? Do you know not what I mean? very long. Yeah, depends what it is. You, you, yeah, you could Google what it is. Isn't, isn't that, isn't beef, you could Google beef, what like eight full, hours or something like that. Yeah, full gastric emptying time definitely isn't more than like a day or two. Like, there's no way. I mean, Ben told me his productivity was never as high as it was for those three days. Yeah. And I can I can attest to it only from not eating carbs. Like when I don't eat any carbs, oh, way and, better. And I'm on the, yeah. doing the doing the carnivore thing, and I'm only eating two or three meals a day. I'm fucking sure. energy level through the roof. Yeah, and I and I can I can see that. But going seven days with no food, I would imagine that some I would I would think by day three or four or five, whatever it's going to be for every let's everyone's try, different. Paul. Let's you're going to die. Paul, I think you guys should try it. <laughs> you're going to die. die. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not trying that. Let's do. Let's do. Let's go as long as we can. I, should, I just did I a fast. You're supposed to do. It I think you, you broke should do it. it. Two hours. In. I think. I think you, you should broke do it. it two hours in. <laughs> I did. A, I did a fast no, no, like two no. weeks he ago. Doing, no, he was doing a finger up my ass fast. That's I not, fasted for 36 hours. You, you lasted, lasted like two or three. For 36 hours. You fasted. I did for one day. No, I did a day and a half. Well, because you the did last a day time I could eat. I couldn't eat past like 10 p.m. the night of like night before. Then I had to fast the whole day. It's a sleep and then a full day. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you fasted for a full day. It would be like 36 yeah. but hours. But then my procedure wasn't until like two o'clock in the afternoon. So I couldn't eat again until like six o'clock at night. Okay, Paul. I'll fast for 36 hours. I mean, you, know, you don't think, I think, I think you should. I think you should. I think go you get can. Blood. I don't know if you will, though. I think you should go get blood work and then fast for a full week and then redo it with all those same inflammatory markers and, you know, liver, kidney, like lipids, blood work, like hematology, yeah, yeah. and then see if there's any tangible difference. Oh, there probably is a huge difference, I would imagine. Maybe. Maybe there's none. We don't know. Well, I, be think interesting to see. I definitely think there'd be a huge difference. Um, yeah, I, I guess it depends. You know, I, I think it depends on who. Like, do I think my blood work would improve from that? No. Do I think that it could improve people's? Absolutely. You know, Mine, mine would for sure, because yeah. right? I know how fucked up my, mine is. Um, but I guess, you... sorry, just to go back to say another annoying point. I think people just need to be very weary. And I think this is like what causes a lot of online debate and people being like, you know, they, their studies and blah, blah, blah. And people be like, yeah, there's so much studies or PubMed studies or this and this. And they post the studies to try and back up their points of certain things, whether it's training, nutrition, drugs, whatever. And they, no one's actually reading the studies. They're saying a study and then they're regurgitating it because someone else showed them that there was a study that proved the point that they're trying to prove, that proved this, that proved that. But if you actually read the study and try and interpret the data, there is a very vast majority of times where they're not actually interpreted the way that they're claiming to be or that the information in there is not at all what the actual outcome that people are talking about is even about in the first place. True, you know? but, but hold on one second. The, the only caveat to that is when I expressed myself about it i'm not talking about you at no, all no i know but i'm saying like this could be something people do 
what yeah. I said about I said I saw this guy on TikTok. I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Right. Yes. But I yeah, no, the, I wasn't speaking about I you. Think the problem, the I think the problem that you're talking about is people will hold on to a study that they found and it becomes, Yeah, but without even gospel. reading or trying to interpret the study. But it becomes gospel, even if they did interpret yes. it. It's like they took no. once and it becomes gospel and that's still. Well, and I think like, you know, they want to believe training, it. There'll be these guys that like, you know, follow science-based lifting guys or whatever. And they'll think that these guys are the ones doing the research and listening to the studies and blah, blah, blah. So they take their words as gospel. But like, you're not even actually checking the studies that these guys are claiming to be right. making their information off of. They're saying, well, in a study about, you know, full stretch this or this or this or, you know, a quarter length this or fucking, you know, isometric holds or whatever. They're saying that. But then maybe if you read the study, it would be not even close to actually the cherry picked data that they're coming out with at the end of it. They're right. just picking one little bit out of it that's not quite interpreted right to try and prove a point to promote something, you know? Yeah. And I see it all the time because I've seen people in the comments arguing about this many times. And then I'll see people talk, posting the studies, posting the studies. And then someone else will be like, did you even fucking read that study? Like it says this, 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 and then I'll go read it. And the person that was claiming from the beginning, which was a smart science-based person, the studies that they were posting had almost no correlation. Many times I saw this to what they were actually trying to prove, mm -hmm. you know, or if it was, it was very vague. It was a very short-term study with, you know, not a complete, um, you know, kind of set of information like there was a lot of nuance to it that needs to be really looked at to be interpreted as definite you know you have way too much time on your hands if you're reading studies that are posted in comment sections i read all the studies that i can with training and nutrition really if i see someone posting it and i think that they're making a claim on it and i think it could be beneficial for me to know then i try and read it for sure yeah. i just get my information from you and i call it a day i don't know if i can waste my time yeah, I'll, let you read the, I'll let you read the studies. <laughs> you tell yeah, me. but the thing is, the thing is, I end up reading all these studies, and I end up just realizing that ninety percent of them have absolutely no tangible reflection on the stuff that I we're know. even talking about in this world, anyways. They're like a study with like six untrained individuals who did, you know, thirty percent intensity for six weeks. It's like this applies zero percent to a bodybuilder. You know, literally no no percentage. You know. Uh, last question. Would you let your daughter date your younger self? No. God. Yeah. Like how young are we talking about? You were, you were disgusting and a thief. A what? thief? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Only from hotel rooms in Cancun. <laughs> uh, how, but, how young are we talking? But I will say I always had good morals and was good to women and respectful to women. I didn't do anything too shady. And I didn't do any weird stuff to girls when I was young. Me too. I wasn't a shade ball. You wasn't? I wasn't a shade yeah. ball. Me neither. Yeah. Yeah. I was never creepy enough. I, I did I did fucked up stuff with like Wait a my but male friends and drugs and stuff thing. like that. Are you fucking kidding me right now? What? So, <laughs> so the so the barometer for somebody dating your daughter is as long as they're not like rapey, then it's okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> I just know I just know my mindset then that I was like I wasn't a fucking yeah, rapey or like had that's bad like barometer intention. for Wait, like oh, bad fucking, intentions I'm or a bad morals. Sweetheart. I want some guy who wants to be a I think I was nice virgin. to women. I didn't I wasn't like overly promiscuous or like I was respectful to women. I I would have no problem with my daughter dating someone like me. I think I would obviously want them to not be as retarded in certain ways as I was, but I also think that you kind of learn and grow out of those things. And I think experiencing them at a certain age isn't a bad thing to be any anyways. If some kid's so fucking straight edge, I probably wouldn't want him dating my daughter, you know? Why? Huh? Probably a Why fucking not? serial killer. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't trust people that have like oh. never are so scared to like try anything in life like that. You know. Oh, uh, uh, the guy's just a pussy. I wouldn't mind him dating my daughter. That's what I mean. <laughs> I won't do you, ch you challenge him to a fight when he walks up to the door. <laughs> right. <A> fight. <laughs> fucking pussy. Huh? Test him that way as soon as he comes to the door. You tough. Eat that whole pizza. I dare you. Yeah. <laughs> Who? You, you wouldn't want your daughter to date your younger self? No way. No. No, no. I'm just, I'm Paul, just, what about you? I'm disgusted. Well, it depends on how young we're talking about. Like, say, like I was in 16. My 16? No, I was I was a good kid when I was in 16. It wasn't until my 20s I started. Wait a minute. Get... This isn't about being a good kid. This isn't about, like, what do you... Well, okay. then what is it? I don't understand. Like, I don't know. I was a good kid. I didn't go to jail. I didn't fucking... But no, I was, no. just, I was how did how did you How did you treat and how were you with women? I was very perverted. 
Exactly. I was not. <laughs> so that's, that's, I, was, I know I was, there was, I was some bad. shit going on back then. I was bad in a lot of ways, but I was, never bad, I was never bad or like, I tried everything. I'd stare at them from a distance. <laughs> no, no, not that way. Not creepy perverted. Not creepy perverted. I'm talking about like, I'd walk by and smell their hair. It was like, yeah. oh, man, I don't want, I don't want anybody defiling. He'd be my like daughter. 16 years old, like, fucking. <laughs> Throat fucking girls Shut and up. shit. Oh <laughs> throat fucking. <laughs> hey, throat goat, get over here. <laughs> yeah, no, I want some kid who wants to preserve his virginity till marriage or something to date my daughter. I want oh, a young. I want a young. You actually though, or are you just saying that like oh. you actually don't want you really realistically don't want your daughters to have sex at all until after they get married? Oh, I was talking about the. The boy, they're, I want him to have that kind of an attitude towards him. Oh, okay. Safe till okay. marriage, but uh, no, I, I'm realistically, I know they're going to more. Yeah. No, more than that's likely. not the question. That's not, I just don't want to be That's, that's all. That wasn't the question. <laughs> do you think it's? Do you honestly think it's in your daughter's? And, sluts, I, and, I'm, though. <laughs> and I'm not saying this because bags. I disagree with right. the fact. I might actually agree with the fact, but I'm just interested to hear your reasoning. Do you actually think it would be a benefit to your daughters to That's date just... a guy that didn't want to have sex until after they were married? Or do you think it would be a detriment to their like life and their for experiences? Them for huh? For, for, like... them or, for them or for me. Paul tucks his daughters in. He's like, what, what, are, what are we not going to be? <laughs> <For us. laughs> Speaking objectively. Because like, you could actually make the case that, yeah, not having sex until after your marriage for everybody is a, is a beneficial thing. So it's like, which side of that do you actually think it would be beneficial? Or do you just want to say it because it's like, I don't want someone fucking my daughter, you know? Well, that's the main reason right there. But yeah, um, okay. but uh, yeah you know, as a beneficial whatever, I don't know. Like, I just, if they're if they're going to do that, and they likely will, I just hope they're not sleeping around. Like, at least it's with yeah. someone that they think well, loves like, them and they girls, love. You girls can do as many drugs as you want. <laughs> But do not be a slut. You better not yes. fuck anybody. Don't be a slut. <laughs> Sniff all the coke you want. Right. Just don't, don't fuck I'll give you all the eight ball. E. You do not right. be a slut. I'll do it with you. But just don't <laughs> be a slut. <laughs> Hope I could tarnish our family name. Uh, oh, this is a tough one. But that's going to be something that's going to have to face in a few more years, which uh, is going to be yeah, fun for you. A new arena. I'm gonna come and hang it out at your house when the guy comes. I back. hope you. I hope you do, Mike. Have they ever had like boys, have they had boys over, like for like birthday parties or anything like that yet? No, no. Um, like I know. Have my... you met any of their male friends? Yeah, I go. I I make it a point. I go on every field trip with my daughters. Really? Yeah, I make it. So a you've point. seen them interact with young boys? Oh yeah, yeah. And my and my oldest one plays basketball in a co-ed league. So okay. she got boys on her team. Do you uh, ever hear uh, them talking about boys? About like this boy's cute or this boy like ever? I've never heard it, but my wife has told me that she. Uh, They've she had conversations. Her. Yeah, they're not going to tell you that. They're not going to tell me nothing. No, I know. <laughs> they, they just they, they just tell me what I want to hear. <laughs> You're going to be in the dark for the next eighteen years, man. And I'd rather be. <laughs> I'd rather be. There's some stuff I don't want to know. Um, but uh, but no, like yeah, I, I I I know all the boys in their class. Yeah. Is there any you want them to stay away from? A couple I've told them to stay away from. Yeah. <laughs> are they? Are they? Are they? Are they non-white? Uh, my my the school my kids go to is very uh multicultural. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> would you rather accidentally call your wife by your ex's name, or have them accidentally call you by their ex's name? Well, I'll take the hit on that. I'll call her wife. I don't want it. That's gonna. Yeah, be what was it again? Ego. That's not gonna That'd go. Be a well. Huge blow to my ego <laughs> if I get called something else. Hey, okay. is this just like? What was the question? Across the house, like the question so, is, the question whatever, is, or is this like I'm when, fucking her? So you know, during sex, would you rather you fuck up and say your ex girlfriend's name, or your wife fucks up and says her ex boyfriend's name? Which would be, which would you I'd rather? I'd rather, I'd rather have rather. her. I'd rather have her screw up so I can hang it over her head forever. Yes, like, yeah. oh, that's, a good point. that's a good point. I'd, I'd rather, rather her time, screw up. huh? You're fucking. But I would. <laughs> that's a good point. But I would she's never get let it. She's not gonna let it go if you do it. No, I don't. I don't want to deal with that on my end. I'd rather her make that fuck up for sure. You know how long you're gonna have to be sorry for, Paul. Oh my god, that? yeah. I know, but that'll fuck my head right up if she called me another guy's name. Nah. Eh. I'm not worried about it. I'd be like, tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, you're sick. <laughs> tell me more, or I fuck you. Tell me all about him. <laughs> Is this how he used to fuck you? <laughs> tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> I would just deny it if I said Oh this. my god. If I said the wrong name, I'd be like, I didn't. You heard it wrong. I'm so fucked. Okay. All right, Paul, lead us off with a prayer. Okay, well, tonight I'm a little tired, so I thought maybe we could all contribute a little bit to tonight's prayer. Nope, 
No, uh, listen, you, you came into wrong. this podcast you thinking that, that one. you're like, I'm going to get them all. <laughs> you came into this thinking I'm going to get them all to contribute. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'll put something together here. Okay. Let us bow our heads. <clears throat> oh, his lights, his lights get nice and angelic for this. Thing. Oh yeah. All right. It's almost like it's uh, a, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like the God's shining. The heaven's shining on me right now. <laughs> well, dear leader, we, uh, as we come together again tonight for another conversation, um, Reflecting back on things, um, there's uh, not a whole lot going on this week. But um, yeah, you guys got anything? You guys got anything you want to say? Yeah, you know, if you guys got anything this week? What's wrong know. with you? Man? <laughs> it's like his mind is empty. Is empty. Yeah, it does. It empties right out of these moments. I swear. he'll forget about everything going on in the world and just like can't even think about it. Well, let's have more positivity. Probably yeah, okay. that's a good one. Yeah, sure. Today. Yeah, yeah, a little bit less hate online, at least. Seen a lot of that lately. Yeah. There what else? Go. Is that it? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, the weather's supposed to get a little nicer next week. This week's oh, no. This week, yeah. Tomorrow's going to be a nice day. Um, that housing market, you know. It's yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah, the housing market, yeah. Um, almost finished paying off my pension buyback. I'm feeling good about that. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I got nothing tonight, man. I, I've had a long day. I've worked twelve hours already today. <laughs> oh, How does the bird just become about you all the time? <laughs> I'm tired. I don't want to do this. <laughs> He's pissed hey, off. Fuck you guys. You guys do it. Hey, man. Fuck. All right, all right guys. Hey, amen. Good night, okay. boys. See you guys. <laughs>